young wide receivers in Terrence Murphy and Jamar Taylor. Murphy last week against Colorado set an A&M freshman record, 11 catches, 146 yards, and one touchdown. Taylor, the sophomore, nine catches, 146 yards, along with two touchdowns. This should be an outstanding matchup. Up next, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 game of the week. Texas A&M against Kansas State on Harley Day in Manhattan, Kansas! You won. There's the 10th all-time meeting between the Aggies and K-State. And the Aggies have won the last two. The Aggies won the toss. They deferred to the second half. Kobe Skates will kick it deep to a trio of Wildcats. They'd like Lockett to handle it in the middle. He and Terrence Newman come together, and they'll down it in the end zone, so a bit of a miscommunication. And Kansas State will begin at the 20-yard line as we check the singular starting offensive unit for the Wildcats. L. Roberson is back, did not play last week against Texas Tech. Earlier this year, 372 yards in total O in a one-point loss to Oklahoma. The offensive line has been beat up. They've lost three of their top four tackles. It's a big key today how they hold up against a very good A&M front. The skill guys, Rock Cartwright, a very fine fullback. Brandon Clark's gimpy might not be able to play today. Injuries everywhere, particularly on the offensive side of the ball for Kansas State. And Josh Scoby flanks out to the near side. And Roberson on a quarterback draw. And he'll move ahead for about four yards. He's covered up by Jared Morris. And let's look at the wrecking crew defense. They've responded pretty well over the last few weeks after a slow start. They have a 3-4 in their base defense. Bernard is coming off a knee injury. He's playing great. Warren's terrific in the middle. Penright has eight and a half sacks among the nation's leader. Leaders coming off the edge at outside linebacker. Keel at one safety. Bartovich at the free safety. Jay Brooks probably not available today with a groin injury. Sammy Davis is a very fine corner. Here's option. And Roberson breaks a tackle. And he'll get a first down, and he'll get the crowd alive out to the 34-yard line. Well, it looked like Roberson was going to be tackled well short of the first down, but he ran right out of the grasp of Botovich, the safety. Botovich came up with, with cloth, but, but nothing more. Here comes Botovich. He's got Roberson. Botovich right here. He grabs, tries to try, all he does is rip the uh, rip the towel out of the front of uh, L. Roberson's pants there to keep his hands dry and didn't come up with Roberson. First down, so L showing that left uh, big toe, the turf toe is still a problem, but he moves pretty, pretty well today. Option again, late pitch, and Scoby will get positive yards, about three yards, as we take a look at the scouting report for Kansas State today. Well, the first thing they want to do, do, Drew, is stay away from second, third, long. You mentioned that beat-up offensive line. Don't want to put pass protection, pressure problems on them. Kick it. Kick the football. 40% field goal conversion, only 62% PAT. And hold AM under 10 points since 1990. They're 46-0 when they hold the opposition under 10 points. And they're 2-0 this season when they do so. They've had four different kickers miss six extra points. You can't get points away like that. Tallman in motion, second and seven. And here's the rock. And Cartwright, with good vision, cuts it back and gets about five. It'll be just short of a first down. Dave, your favorite player in college football. Well, this kid's a complete fullback, and that's a big key in today's game. Rock Cartwright, and on the other side, Joe Weber, they give a running game at the fullback position. Not a whole lot of schools do. Rock is a great blocker. He caught six passes last week against Texas Tech, and he runs the ball very well. He averaged over six yards a carry last season running the football. That kid is a player. And he's the lead man this time for Scobie, and he gets it done at the line of scrimmage. Scobie gets the first down. He had a good block on Gamble, Dave, in the hole. Well, the first key is getting yards on first and second down. On the first first and ten, they didn't even face third down. This third down conversion was third and short. And they're in the old ISO. There's Rock, number 25, with the lead block. Watch the Rock, and Scobie's going to follow the man. Rock gets his pads down, lifts, drive, drive, drive. Scobie, first down yardage, running through Gamble. Actually, Rock's lead block was on Christian Rodriguez, but it was effective. 
and Scobie this time has rejected the hole. Leading the way, Rocky Bernard. He had 10 tackles from his defensive end spot last week in the loss at Colorado. That's a bunch for a down lineman. Well, Rocky Bernard is back, Drew, and in very, feeling very confident. Had a knee reconstruction. Now his confidence is back. He's playing with a lot more recklessness. Tell you what, between Rocky Bernard and Ty Warren, those three down linemen, those are two of the better down linemen in all of college football, never mind the Big 12. They are solid. Second and nine, so Kansas State a little off schedule here. Right, we'll see if Texas A&M heats them up a little bit. You know, you can blitz against the run as well as the pass. And whatever they were going to do, confused Kansas State. L. Robertson calls timeout. It's early in Manhattan, no score. Second and nine after the timeout. Let's take a look at a couple of players to watch in this afternoon's game. Well, Jared Penright at linebacker, eight and a half sacks. That's uh, leads the Big 12 and tied for third best in the entire nation. Terry Pierce, very, very outstanding linebacker for Kansas State. Real athletic, and he's coming downhill and making hits at the line of scrimmage with regularity. is complete to Scobie, who was wrapped up immediately on the play by Wes Bodovich. And let's take a look at the scouting report for the Aggies who come in five up and one down. Well, the first thing they want to do is uh, ball security. Don't give it up on the road. You can't turn it over. Kansas State has 10 interceptions the last four games. Can't happen. Outrush the Wildcats. They want to win the time of possession. a and does. And they want to score first. Take the crowd out of it. Get, give Kansas State the here-we-go-again mentality a little bit. Get up early and make them play some catch-up. And Roberson changing the play. Two tight ends, Cartwright the single setback. Here's the option, and Roberson will be stopped short of a first down. About a yard short, and an early decision for Bill Snyder at the plus 45. Well, he's got Jared Bright doing it all today. He's going to punt, he's going to kick off, and he's going to kick field goals. This is way too long a field goal. This is either four down territory or punt it away. I think, what do you have to lose? Very little to lose, everything to gain. Kansas State looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and short. Now they're now they're sending in the, the punt team, and Bright's going to kick it away. The crowd almost talked Bill Snyder into doing it, but he thought better of it. If it didn't occur, he was going to give Texas A&M great field position and early opportunity. I think it's smart early in this football game scoreless to try to play field position and pin A&M back. It's going to be a defensive battle for the most part today, in my opinion. Good snap, and Bright will indeed punt the football. Uh, this one's off the side of uh, his instep and goes out of bounds around the 28-yard line, maybe even the 30-yard line. So it's a punt of just 15 yards. That's not what they were looking for as Kansas State once again does not score a touchdown on their opening drive of the game. They have not all year long, just six points to show a couple of field goals. Here's the singular offensive starters for the Aggies. Mark Farris clicking at 60%. Ten touchdowns, nine picks, and the Aggies go right to the line of scrimmage. Up tempo. Farmer, the true freshman, goes in motion. And Weber, the up back, gets nothing. Drew, that's the exact same play that Kansas State ran. They, they broke the formation with Scobie and gave the ball to Rock. So both fullbacks carried the ball to start the football game for each team. Interesting. Offensive line led by Seth McKinney. Over 40-plus consecutive starts. He's an All-American candidate, as good as it gets at center. And the skill guys, they've had some injuries at wide receiver, but Murphy and Taylor have really stepped up. No Delatore today. Michael Delatore has a back injury again. Thomas Carragher, a true freshman, starts at tight end. He's the only tight end they have. Another herniated disc for De La Torre. Farmer, nothing to it. Maybe a yard. Pierce got penetration and tripped him up. And Kansas State always plays great defense. 
Top five in the country the last four years on the defensive side. Bryant, Reese, Schull steps in at right end. Today, Lieber and Pierce lead this defense. Hickman goes for Buell. A little bit of a changeup at weak side backer. And Fagans and Newman, two good corners. Yates steps in today for John McGraw, who's the quarterback back there. But he has a knee injury and is unlikely to play. Third and nine. Barris has a screen. No gain, maybe a loss on the play. Ripped the shoe right off of the receiver. That's Brian Hickman. That was a great reaction by Hickman. Made the tackle and, and pulled the tire right off of the road there. This is the old alley screen. Wide receiver, and there's Hickman. Great reaction, great read. Sure tackle, pulls the shoe right off the foot. Boy, that's an outstanding defensive effort by Kansas State. Last week against Texas Tech, they gave up seven yards per play, Drew. Very uncharacteristic. Skates a punt, lock it. Back at his own 25. Wow. This is an enormous boot. He drives Lockett to the 11. And Lockett will get out to the 19-yard line. Tremendous punt, 59 yards, 18 on the return. score midway first quarter drew goodman dave lapham jim knox from manhattan kansas aaron lockett with that 18 yard return now the career all-purpose yards leader in kansas state football history moves in front of andre coleman well this year most of his all-purpose yards drew have come via kick return he's uh, averaging almost 37 per return second best in the country he's got a 97 yard kickoff return touchdown but this kid is a is a threat in so many ways when he gets his hands on the football Last year, one of the best punt returners in college football. He's an All-American. Led the nation. He averaged uh, over 22 a return last year in punt returns. Uh-oh. Movement on the left side. Martin. Matt Martin looked like he got going a little bit early. And he's fighting a little bit of a knee injury himself. He's playing injured. Kansas State's offensive line's all beaten up. Kansas State still... Offense, five yards. Repeat, first down. Kansas State still... Averaging 10 penalties per game for almost 83, a little over 83 yards. That's still not satisfactory by Bill Snyder standards. That's given up too many, too many easy yards by self-destruction for the defense. It's just you're setting them up. You're going to get yourself off your schedule. Scobie is checked out. Three wide receivers set. Roberson out of the gun on first and 15 with Cartwright next to him. Martin, Martin and left tackle and Rock Cartwright communicating a little bit on that side of the field for pass protection purposes. That's where Penwright is, but he doesn't come. Roberson, I mean, all day down the middle for Lloyd and just out of his outstretched hands. Sean Weston was there in coverage. So they feel like Weston can really run, but they, they feel that he's a better guy to go after at the corner position. And really stretching the football field here. Nothing fancy. Little little uh, post down the middle of the football field. He ran a triple move, really, post, corner post. And Weston stayed with them, had it underneath help from the safety. And they want to they want to go after after him a little bit more, Weston, because they have so much respect for the other corner, Sammy Davis, who's uh, got four interceptions amongst the nation's leaders. Scobie back in. They go play action. Roberson, wow. he's got Wallace out there. Now Weston recovers, and a battle for the football. It goes incomplete. Crowd thought there was contact by Weston down at the 15-yard line. Well, they pulled the red shirt on Taco Wallace today, and they stretched him down the football field immediately. Brandon Clark has got that foot problem, and so they uh, they said, Taco Wallace, you got to help us. We're pulling your red shirt. And they're really stretching Texas a and two plays in a row down the football field. You think L. Roberson's got arm strength? Yeah, you're right. I mean, he absolutely winged this thing about 70 yards in the air, it looked like. 
and, uh, and Wallace trying to position himself, trying to get the body position on Weston, and Weston did a good job of staying with it and making a play. Third and 15, they need the 39-yard line. They have a screen set up, Scobie with the football. And Scobie lowers his pads, he'll get it out to the 35, but he's gonna be about four yards shy. And we'll see the punt unit again for Kansas State. Not a real surprise, the fact that the defensive battle early on in this football game, two of the top defenses in college football. Kansas State ranked number 18 in total defense coming in, and uh, A&M is, is even better than that. I mean, they're <laughs> overall, they're number four defensively, so two fine defensive units going head-to-head. -head. Bridal punt it, Mickey Jones back around his own 27. And this is a much better effort by Bright. Jones, halo infraction. We see that uh, six times a game, and he's down at the 21-yard line. So they'll move it five yards, and they'll get it to the 26. Well, I really don't like it because they they have good position. They're not interfering with, with his opportunity to catch the football. When you give them a two-yard separation, guys are so good in the return game, they can make you miss if you stay two yards away from them. I mean, as long as they're not interfering with, the, interfering with his opportunity to catch it, I say eliminate that halo. Look, they're breaking down, and they're saying, I understand you, you need to catch the football. We're going to respect that. You know, and, and now you have an infraction, a halo infraction, just inside the Yates, inside that two-yard area. But he had plenty of vision, plenty of opportunity to catch the football. That's a free five yards that I don't like. Do you know what, though? I think from a coach's perspective, it would not surprise me if some coaches say, I would rather see you do that. We'll take the five yards rather sure. than see a guy bust one. Well, it, yeah, exactly. And, and uh, on Thursday night, there was, a, there was an infraction on the halo and a kick, a kick out of the game. Barris on a swing route and he's over the head of Terrence Thomas who lined up in the backfield. And the big Boise State upset of uh, Fresno State. He just went down and absolutely detonated the return guy without any respect to the halo at all. And he gets kicked out of the football game for it. You know, but I mean, it makes the return guy think a little bit. I think they should uh, they should rethink that in the offseason, in my opinion. But boy, Texas A&M, both teams stretching the field in the passing game. The wheel route was there. Second and 10, Farmer gets into the secondary. And he'll have a first down to the 41. Someone lost their cap. And injured. Lost his helmet, and it looks like he's got a little bit of a leg problem. Is that Yates? Who is that? Slow to get up. Now he's on his feet. I think that is Billy Yates. What? It's the counter. Well, he's got to pull in lineman and the fullback. Different ways to run the counter. And they lead Farmer right through the pasture. Nice little, uh, nice little hole right there, creasing Kansas State's defensive football team. They wanted to play Farmer uh, a lot more today. The true freshman from Tyler, Texas. Came in with 231 yards and just under four yards of carry. Well, they got the change up, you know, Farmer and, and, and Joseph. Same thing, Joseph will pound you, Farmer will make you miss. Farmer behind Jones in the eye, and he gets the call again. And he finds another opening. Proctor will bring him down, but he got eight or nine. And he was stopped initially. Yeah, he stopped and he made a quick lateral move and then got his pads north and south. The good thing about Farmer, he never turns his shoulder pads to the sideline through this whole encounter. You know, he sees there's not much necessarily at the point of attack and then bounces it, gets his pads north and south immediately. That's just good vision and he's not an easy guy to bring down. Again, Farmer able to get a bit of a crease. First down yardage across the 50 to the 47 of Kansas State. Andrew Schell will get credit for the tackle, the sophomore from Webb City, Missouri. Well, both Derek Farmer and Keith Joseph, the two freshman running backs for Texas A&M, have each rushed for 100 yards you know, this season. So, I mean, these guys are talented, talented running backs. Farmer's already averaging seven yards a pop early in this football game. A&M coming out and establishing that running game to complement Ferris. They didn't think they ran the ball well enough against Colorado last week to balance their offense. They want to get that problem rectified. Taylor Wright and Murphy left. And here's the draw, Farmer. 
Look at this, the freshman running hard. Another eight yards. I'll tell you what, he ran over a linebacker who's on his backside, stunned. That's, That's Ben Lieber. Lieber. That doesn't happen. He ran Lieber over, and Lieber, I think, has got a stinger. I mean, Lieber's trying to get up. It's like he took a, a jab from Frazier. And Farmer just lowered his pads and just threw a, a, a violent right forearm and just ran right over Lieber and stunned him. And then helmet-to-helmet contact, and Lieber took the worst of it, and... And he's down, and, and, and I think, you know, you, you have a situation where it could be a concussion. Dave, Derek Farmer, an 18-year-old kid who's 190 pounds maybe, just showed us something. Oh. I mean, he just ran over one of the top linebackers in a conference filled with great linebackers. Five carries now for Farmer, 36 yards and 36 tough yards, aggressive yards, physical yards. And he and Lieber hit helmet to helmet. And Lieber's helmet didn't hold up as well as Farmer's helmet. Lieber, 6'4", 250. Farmer, nowhere that size. Lieber shaking it off. I don't know if we're looking at Stinger or just fell wrong. Looks like he'll be back in the game. Lieber makes a good read, and, and he gets off the block uh, and, and separates, and he just got stunned. I mean, he just absolutely... I think it might be a Stinger more so. Looked like he got jammed between his shoulder pads and his helmet a little bit with that right shoulder. He definitely, uh, he definitely took a shot from Farmer. That was a pretty good little right arm delivery there. And he was in textbook position. Yeah, he was broken down. He had his pads low. Second and a couple, maybe a down to play with here for the Aggies. Nope, they'll keep it on the ground. They'll lose a bunch. Farmer loses two or three. It's the Tank Man, Tank Reese. 5'10", about, about 280, Dave. How about Tank? He lives with Rock Cartwright, right? Yeah, exactly. Cut from the same cloth for the most part. You know, you've got, you've got a deal where, for the first time in a long time, this late into the season, Kansas State has allowed more sacks and has more tackles for loss against them than they've generated. That's highly unusual. Usually, Kansas State has more quarterback sacks and more tackles for loss than the opponent. It's the other way around this year. And just nine sacks coming in for the Wildcat defense. Third and six here for the Aggies. Barris to Taylor, and he's tackled right near the first down. Got Forward it. progress may give him the first down as Derek Yates made the tackle. And speaking of Yates, let's check in with Jim Knox. Jim? All right, Drew, Billy Yates back in the game. They said he had a sprained left knee, but of course, can't keep a good man down. Billy Yates back in the game. You know, Taylor last week, guys, he had nine catches for 146 yards. Two of those catches were touchdowns. Both came on third down. Both of his touchdowns were third down conversions. He just made another big third down conversion right there, becoming a go-to guy in crucial situations. Here we have a little wishbone effect at the wide receiver position. Little uh, wishbone cluster. And they'll run draw out of it, and it's not going to go. Because Tank Reese again got penetration. Dave, does he go underneath the turf and come up in the backfield? A tank's disruptive now. They moved him from nose tackle to three technique, which is a defensive tackle on the outside shoulder of the guard. And they've told him, get up the football field, disrupt, penetrate. And Tank is doing it, boy, in this drive, in this possession by Texas A&M. He's had a couple of disruption tackles for loss. Second and 12. In the football game, Keith Joseph. He's the single setback. There's Tank right there. Let's watch Tank. Here comes Joseph, and the tackle's made by Josh Buell. Two or three, that's it. Now they're in a third and long situation, but Mark Ferris has been very, very productive in these scenarios, averaging almost, uh, completing almost 60% of his passes for his career. He's at 60% for this season, almost for his career. He's got 20 starts as an AM quarterback, who is averaging 202 yards passing per start. No quarterback in Texas AM history has averaged 200 yards a game in his starting career. Ferris is on track to be the first to do so. Yeah, I don't think there's any question. This is the best throwing quarterback they've ever had in College Station. Good quick throw, first down and more for Murphy to the 19-yard line. How quick did Ferris deliver that football? And how quick did Murphy make his decision to get up the football field and, and, and make people miss? And he made uh, he made a pretty good football player in Fagan's miss. 
Ferris is looking at it. He sees Murphy run the pivot route, and then Fagans misses. Murphy gets up the football field immediately with a great cut. Yards after catch. Yards after first contact. Murphy, Murphy did a heck of a job there. Not a bad wide receiver for a kid who was a terrific high school quarterback. Farmer. Maybe a couple, and Ben Lieber back in there makes a tackle. That's great news for the Wildcats. Yeah, I think he more, had more of a stinger, like a pinched nerve type feeling. You know, you get that stinger and, you, and your arm goes numb, and it's kind of a, a kind of an unsettling feeling, to say the least. But obviously, he's got all that feeling back, and he's uh, he's back in the football game. This is one of the senior leaders. Well, he's a two-year captain, and his buddy in the middle, Terry Pierce, is a captain as a sophomore. So not only terrific players, terrific leaders. Ferris, the option look, Farmer. And he's out of bounds. First holding, down holding. if it uh, holds up. Get a holding down there. I, th I think the fullback's the guilty party. Drew. I, th I think Stacy Jones reached out and grabbed when he was lead blocking. John Laurie is our referee this day. Incidental face mask, five-yard oh, no. penalty, half the distance, first down. Face mask on, on Kansas State, incidental, five-yard, not 15. Well, that's going to be half the distance because I think he went out of bounds at the seven-yard line, so they'll put it down. Well, I say eight-yard line, they put it down at the four-yard line. First and goal for Texas A&M at the four. Texas A&M in, in the red zone has been has been decent. And that's a big key today. He's not settling for touchdown or for field goals in the red zone, punching it across for touchdowns. Usually this is where you see Joe Weber, but he's not in there. It's Farmer behind Jones. Farmer's showing plenty of power though today, isn't he? He has. Yeah, they didn't, they didn't get start. it off. False start, maybe. A little early movement. And I'm up, up front. Dead ball. Nab infraction offense. Five yards. Replay. First down. Here you'll see the, the early movement by Yates breaks the stance just before the snap of the football, trying to trying to jump the count. And instead of jumping the count, he jumped early. Well, that was going to be a run to Farmer, David. Different set of circumstances when you're talking about first and goal at the nine as opposed to the four. You're right about that. That's that's an area where you don't want to take those kind of penalties. I mean, these yards are tough to come by. AM's 50% touchdowns in the red zone. Four field goals, you know, they've had they've had five no-point scenarios in the red zone this season. Farmer and Oshler Fleming in the backfield. Barris goes to Fleming. Good looking play to the goal line. Did he get in? You bet. Touchdown, Texas AM on the shuttle pass. Great call. That's the jack of all trades, Fleming. You know, he's kind of the forgotten man at the running back position when you have Farmer and Joseph getting a lot of carries, but Fleming comes in there and defensively you relax a little bit and say, uh, they're probably not going to go here. They might be throwing the football. Well, they did. They threw the shuttle pass to, uh, to Fleming, and he, he had it pay off. And skates, tacks on, point number seven. Texas A&M. Gets in the end zone, Oshler Fleming on a nine-yard pass from Mark Ferris. Within these walls, students of all ages pursue a higher level of education. A dedication to learning that demands patience and persistence. They study the lessons of the great masters, and one by one, they'll tee off to a better game of golf to be a decent little uh, receiver right there as well. A little shuttle pass, took it, uh, took it to the house. Nice effort. 13 play drive. That's exactly what Texas A&M wanted to do today. Control the clock, win the time of possession game. They, they didn't get it done last week against Colorado. They've been 50-50 pass run this year, but so far today, nine rushes, just five throws. And that's exactly what R.C. Slocum wanted to get back to, just getting that ground game going a little bit. Gates hammers this one through the end zone and nearly into the crowd. 
Well, here's the uh, the shuttle pass touchdown. There's Fleming. Watch, he's just going to come up amongst the offensive linemen and, and hide a little bit. And, and the linebackers forget all about him. Look, everybody's dropping into their zones, and they forget about Fleming. And by the time they can react, one of the offensive linemen peels off and picks up the linebacker. To the house goes Fleming. Pierce can't get there. Well-conceived, well-executed play. Nice call by Dino Babers, the offensive coordinator for Texas A&M. Danny Morris is in, along with Joe Hall. Hall's the fullback, Morris the tailback, and here's Morris with a little more speed than Scobie, but he's not going to get to run wide. Down at the 19-yard line, Rodriguez and Rocky Bernard there as we check in with Jim Knox. Okay, thank you, Drew. L. Robinson, of course, playing in a little bit of pain due to that turf toe. Now, they called in a specialist, Kansas State did this week. They looked at the toe, and they went against the specially designed steel toe shoe. What he's playing with now underneath the shoe, in the shoe, is a brace. It's a split brace on his left toe. We'll see if it holds up today, Drew. Talk about a lot of spat. Yeah, that's, that's Johnson & Johnson Award right there. That's five rolls of tape. It's on his left big toe. I've played with turf toe before. It ended Jack Lambert's career. That's no uh, little easy injury there. Short side option. Roberson grabbed by Rodriguez. He stayed home beautifully on the play. And it, again, it'll be a third and six. And, and that's not the situation any football team wants to be in. No, you want to be in third and short, third and medium, worst case scenario. Kansas State, third and a little bit longer than that. Turf toe, let me explain what it is. You jam your toe and you get swelling. Your toe jams back into your foot, and right at the joint where the toe hooks up to your foot, you get a lot of swelling, and you have no range of motion. You can't push off, and it's a painful injury. Well, Kansas State Dave's going to wait to snap the football after the quarter break. The first chapter closed. Kansas State is being shut out 7-0 at home. Oshler Fleming, the touchdown for the Aggies. minutes Texas A&M leads seven to nothing back upstairs with Dave Lapham I'm Drew Goodman the Aggies wanted to get back to their running ways today and they wanted to own the clock and in the first quarter they did they sure did particularly on the touchdown drive drew 13 plays for a good number of yards and, and time of possession they really ate the clock up and it's funny it used to be Texas A&M throw it to balance the offense now they're running it to balance their throwing attack and Roberson on third down incomplete for Aaron Lockett Check it, it's Ricky Lloyd who couldn't hang on to the football. And three possession, three punts for Kansas State. And the time of possession that we referenced a moment ago, 8.08, so about a minute plus in favor of the Aggies through one period. And Mickey Jones will be back deep, and Jared Bright will punt it. He'll have the wind at his back a little bit instead of kicking into it like he did in that first quarter when he only got a 15-yard effort. And this is not a great punt again, We're though it takes roll. a beautiful bounce. Oh, it's going to look good. Wow. Newman gobbles it up and downs it at the 16-yard line. It's 60 yards, so I think 30 of it came on the roll. Yeah. It was almost a 50-50 shot there. Well, Mark Ferris a few moments ago threw his 11th touchdown of the year, and earlier we had a chance to talk to R.C. Slocum about his junior quarterback. Mark Ferris has done a great job. He gives us leadership. He gives us steadiness. Uh, we're never out of a game. Uh, last week, with five minutes to go, we took the ball over. In two plays, we scored. Uh, defense kicked off. We held them, got the ball back with two minutes and nine seconds to go, and Mark took us right down the field. At that time, I think he completed 11 straight passes. So he gives us a chance. As long as Mark's out there, I feel confident that we're, we're never out of a ball game. The 
ended up completing a school record 14 straight. Here's a fade looking for Murphy. He comes down with a football. What a grab by Murphy with Petey Fagans all over him at the 45. Not only Petey Fagans, Milton Proctor. I mean, there were two defenders in the area, and he comes down with a jump ball, basically, for a 28-yard pickup. Tremendous play by Murphy. You know, he, he, he'll bail quarterbacks out because that's the position that he played. So he understands all the subtleties of how to get open and, and how to get after the football, how the quarterback might be thinking about throwing the football. And an unbelievable effort just out jumps Petey Fagans, who's got four interceptions on the season. A little push off. He gets away with the subtle push off. The Kansas State bench saying should have been called, but it wasn't. Farmer hammers it up in there. He'll get four or five yards. And it'll be second down and five. Proctor again involved in the tackle. Seth McKinney's a terrific player. 6'3", better than 300 pounds. He's from Westlake High School in Austin, Dave. And Drew, he's going to make a lot of money on Sunday. He's got a brother already playing in the NFL, the Colts. Look at that school record power clean. 401 pounds, scholar athlete of the year. 45th straight start. He's got the durability, the smarts, the physical strength. That's a complete football player at the center position. Makes all the line calls. Farmer. Boy, that was a very good tackle by Terry Pierce. And we saw these guys a couple of weeks ago. They lost at home to Colorado, but it had nothing to do with the play of 56. No, he's, a, he's an effort guy. And, and you know, his, his defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, you know, Terry, you're, you're a good athlete. You're pretty. You run. Now we want to see you start coming downhill and delivering the wood a little bit. And he brought the leather on that one big time. Terry Pierce is a, is a fine, fine linebacker prospect. No question about it. Third and five, here comes the crowd. Ball just shy of midfield. Watch this right here. That's Murphy. He's got that common sense, that little going on with his quarterback. Ferris will have a first down. It's Taylor. Durant Tyler, ta excuse me, Durant Tyler had the coverage. Second catch for Taylor. And again, Dave, it's a third down reception that moves the chains. And, and went to the other of the duo, to, to Taylor. And what, what they did here is they got Ferris out of pocket. And here's Taylor in the slot. Watch, watch his effort. But Ferris comes out of pocket. It's just a little out pattern. And Ferris, to change the launch point, to help his young tackles. He's got Ruger at left tackle. He doesn't necessarily want to have Ruber pass protecting with the same the same spot every day. Every play, they get him out of pocket. He does a good job with his mechanics to get Taylor the ball. Ferris double move. Murphy's all alone. Oh wow! Five yard line touchdown on the out and up. It's 13 and up. Think Texas A&M. Gorgeous throw by Ferris and a beautiful move by Terrence Murphy. I'll tell you, this kid has made the conversion to the receiver position, and he's going against Petey Fagan is having a heck of a season. You know, I mean, he's got four interceptions. Probably he's got those interceptions because he's had more opportunities than Newman. They're staying away from Terrence Newman, and they're matching Murphy up on Petey Fagan's and having a lot of success. And this kid really has great understanding. They call it common sense of football, the football IQ factor that's the common sense variety, and Murphy's got a bunch of it. Cody skates, will try to make it 14, and the hold by Wes Bodovich, and he sneaks it through. Two touchdown throws by Mark Farris. Murphy caps off the longest touchdown drive of the year for the Aggies. We've said this before, Farris has a hot hand. He's seven of eight in the early going. The 26-year-old junior hooks up with the former quarterback, Terrence Murphy. An 83-yard drive, the longest touchdown drive of the year for the Aggies. And Skate's kickoff goes through the end zone. You know, he just moved to sixth on the all-time passing list in College Station. Had a guy we know, Gary Kubiak, the great offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos. I'll tell you, he had a great career as well, did Kubiak here at AM, but you gotta give you gotta tip your cap to Terrence Murphy. I mean, he just double move. He runs the out and up on Petey Fagan, and Petey Fagan bites on the out tremendous. He's guessing. And he bites and he gets turned around. Now the separation, the out and up, Murphy's gone. Fagan's is trying to close. Fagan's runs well. But when you get when you bite that badly on the initial move of the double move, you have trouble. Tremendous uh, effort by Murphy and even better throw by his quarterback, Ferris. Two tights, big Joe Hall gets the football. 
And you better bring some friends if you're going to tackle Big Joe. He ran into Amon Simon and drove him back a yard or two. Give him six. Let's take a look at what Ferris was looking at as Murphy runs the route. You know, Ferris, is he's, he's got him locked in pretty well. I mean, he's looking at him the whole way. He's the primary guy. He just stays with that primary receiver, and he probably couldn't get rid of the ball quickly enough when he saw Fagan's bite on that out so quickly. I mean, he never looked anywhere else but to his primary guy, Murphy. Third touchdown of the season for Murphy. Second and four. And Big Joe bounces for a couple. It'll be third and two. Big Joe, 6'2", and about 300 pounds or so, depending on uh, how much breakfast he ate. Absolutely. In lunch and dinner. Because Joe's getting all those meals in. I'll tell you what, you've got, uh, you've got a couple of fullback tight bodies, you know, in, in Rock Cartwright and Joe Hall that are unusual, to say the least. There's the Rock. He is a rock. I'll tell you what, this kid's bench press is 502 pounds. Look at Darren Sproles, a quick, true freshman you talked about off the top. He's at the tail, and he's going to get the football. He's got to make somebody wow. miss. He does wow. that. Whoa! To the 33, that is exactly what you were demonstrating oh, at the top of the broadcast today. And unfortunately, he's got Peroni, a defensive end, out in space. And Peroni just freezes. He gets locked up. And Sproles, you talk about the... The quickness, watch Sproles. Fake pitch the opposite direction, the short side of the field. Plant, cut. Peroni says, What was that? And out to the edge goes Sproles. I would have blown an ACL, MCL, and PCL if I tried that. There would have been ligaments all over the field. You got the whole alphabet in that sentence. Here is Roberson breaking one. And Roberson just shy of midfield of the 49. You know what? That kid Sproles gave the offense some life. Yeah, and he gave Roberson uh, something to match. Roberson said, hey, that was a nice move, Mr. Sproles. Yeah, that was a nice change of direction, make somebody miss. I'm going to show you I can do the same thing. And Sproles is dynamic, 5'7", 170 pounds. But then Roberson comes up with his opportunity just to, to plant and turn it up the football field. Texas A&M paying a lot of attention to Sproles as the pitch man. And L, bad turf toe and all, makes it happen. Yeah, I was going to say that toe is holding up okay. He made a couple of violent cuts in the secondary. 15 on the advance. Here's Roberson again. L. Roberson to the 33-yard line. Sammy Davis has to make the tackle again. Well, this does two things. Running the option as effectively as Kansas State is doing, it spreads Texas A&M's defense out, and it takes away their desire to blitz, because if you blitz against the option, you're, you're in trouble. And Roberson is spreading them out now and making good decisions and minimizing Texas A&M's desire to load the line of scrimmage and blitz. for Roberson. He's he is. Right. Penn Wright's going to get another sack. He has nine and a half now. Wow. How about that kid? Talk about determination. Drew, the only game all season long where he was shut out was Colorado. No sacks against Colorado. He's gotten at least one against everybody else. And this kid is the real deal. Penn Wright is, a, is, an, is an amazing pass rusher. Second down, 12. This is his nine, nine and a half sacks on the season now. And he just keeps working at it. Has the inside move, keeps working at it, and takes Roberson down. Just a tremendous effort by a great pass rusher. And Roberson's not an easy guy to sack. Roberson gets a block from Cartwright. He'll have a first down to the 18-yard line. So the option game is working wonders right now for the Wildcats. Cartwright loaded up on the edge. It's got uh, it's got Texas A&M spread out. It, it, it's definitely what it's got. It makes it easier for the offensive line. They don't have to worry about pass protection. Check this block out right here. That's our man Rock. Rock doing a good job on the edge, securing the perimeter for L. Roberson. We'll take a look at Rock at halftime, how he does that blocking. Joe Hall. Give him five. Boy, that's a contrast. You're trying to catch the slippery L. Roberson, and then the, the big man comes at you. Well, what you do, Drew, is you get him spread out, get him defending the perimeter, and then you hammer him in the belly, and you run your power game. 
And that's more than a hall. That's the whole building. Joe Hall is... is it's, a a it's a wide hall. Yeah, it's a corridor. It's a hall. It's, it's every room off the hall. It's the whole package, Big Joe. That is a man. Big Joe stays in the game on second and five. Two tights for Kansas State. And Joe Hall gets spilled. Wes Bodovich aimed at his third eyelid on his shoe, and that's uh, a good spot to aim on Joe Hall. Yeah, you definitely don't want to mess with him upstairs. You go down to the foundation. And, he, and a very sure hit by Bodovich. I, I uh, admire his courage in the hole. Unblocked, and as the unblocked guy, he made the tackle. And Joe Hall was unable to do anything. Nine plays at this juncture for Kansas State, answering the long drive a and hole. This is a large one here. Third down, late pitch. Scoby with a flag down. We'll get the first down of the four if the play holds up. Right. And I'll tell you what, Roberson took a lick. Yes, he did. I wonder if they've got holding on the edge here against Kansas State. If it is, that's a very, very costly penalty. But L. Roberson held the ball the last minute and got creamed and paid the price. But boy, just a very, very effective pitch to the edge. Kicker, offense, five yards. Replay, third down. The offense was not set. You have to be set for a full second after you go in motion. Once you motion and you start into your stance, or even if you stop, mo if you stay in a two-point, you have to come stationary for a full second before the snap of the football. Kansas State now four penalties. They've been averaging 10 a game. They've got four penalties. Not a whole lot of yards, but that one was painful because not only you lose the yards that you accumulated on the pitch as well in the option. And that has troubled Bill Snyder all year long. He had 17 penalties against his club in that one-point loss down at Norman. So now you're looking at third and 10. They need the eight-yard line. Four coming for A&M, and the pass would have wow. gone for a first down. Wallace just flat dropped it. Boy. He had a first down, and he lost it. That's unfortunate, because that's one that, uh, you know, as a coaching staff, you want to put a, put a young man in, in a position to make a play, give him an opportunity. The play call was perfect, and uh, Taco just can't squeeze it. That was a slippery Taco right there. Taco Wallace, red shirt pulled off of him. Could not come up with the catch because he's got yards. He, he may have threatened the end zone if he caught that football. This is one of the other problems for Kansas State. They have two field goals all year long. Bright. Oh, he pushed it. Yep, two of six. And this is a team that has had two All-American kickers over the last few years. Martin Gramatica and Jamie Rehm. The world tastes better. And by Comfort Inns, it's more than a room, it's comfort. We're on campus at Kansas State University. Sold out Wagner Field. The Aggies leading the Wildcats 14 to nothing. And Farris out of the gun has a screen set up and it's dropped. And that's probably just as well. A moment ago, a very impressive drive by Kansas State and then two errors. Bright misses the field goal. And Taco Wallace drops a pass that would have resulted in a first and goal at the very least situation. Look at that, a 10-play drive taking almost seven and a half minutes off the clock and you get nothing out of it. You have to finish. And that's uh, that's how you get better as a football team. When opportunities present themselves, you have to capitalize them. Taco Wallace obviously didn't capitalize it. And Jared Bright misses a, a chip shot variety field goal. The kicking woes continue. You saw the average on the graphic a moment ago. The last four years, they've averaged 19 of 23 in the field goal department. Here's Farmer trying to bounce it, and he runs over for a moment. Demarcus Petey Fagans. Like the little rascals growing right. up, and Grandma started calling him Petey. And well, the dog. It stuck. The dog is named Petey, and the dog has a, a black circle around its eye, and the, the, his grandmother thought that he had, you know, a black look around his eye, and she started calling him Petey because of the, the dog, uh, little rascals, dog Petey, and it stuck. And there you go. And there's Petey. Third and seven. Draw to Farmer. And K-State closes it down. 
K-State, the 18th ranked defense in the country. The Aggies, number four coming in. And if you're good defense, you get off blocks. And, and the Wildcats did on that play. They, they certainly did. And the Texas A&M defense now has had a chance to regroup, but only for three plays on the sideline. They are on the field for a 10-play drive. And, and Kansas State had it going with the option. Let's see if uh, Mike Hankowitz, the defensive coordinator, was able to make any adjustments during that little lull in the action to get his defense together and, and see what they could come up with to stop that option play that Kansas State was so effective. Skates will punt it. Lockett is back at his own 35. Dead ball right there. Yep, that'll come out to about the 38-yard line where the touch happened. So they'll mark it uh, 18 yards further upfield than where you see it right now as we go downstairs and pay a visit with uh, our Harley Davidson man, Jim Knox. I thought uh, Knox is. Yeah, how about that? All right, coming up, guys, on the Sonic American Drive and Halftime Report, we'll talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to tell you about the sites for the year 2002-2003 Big 12 Football Championship game. Of course, this year's site, Irving, Texas, December 1st, has been sold out. But 2002, you can maybe get those tickets now. Houston Reliant Park, the game will be played in Houston, Texas, 2002. 2003, hey, right down the road, Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, guys. So try to get those tickets now. Hey, Noxie, I got one question. Where'd you get that patriotic bandana, that red, white, and blue uh, bandana you were wearing on your head? That was a good touch right there. Of course, my riding partners, the Harley boys, gave that to me, Dave. There you go. Here's the quarterback draw, Roberson. We'll get about six, maybe even seven yards. The thing about Noxie, and I commend the driver, he didn't allow Noxie to touch any of the controls. Right, well, Noxie would have popped a wheelie. You know he would have yeah. come. He would have come the length of this, the field on one wheel. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, guys, I had suggested a wheelie right down. I guess the stretch here yeah. about 100 yards, but they let, wouldn't let me go for that. Wouldn't do it, huh? Nah, <laughs> took yeah. me right out of that game plan. Yeah, you would have been showing up the rest of the riders. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Second down and three. 5:06. Clock moving to go in the first half. 14 to nothing. Texas A&M. Here's Rock Cartwright. And he rumbles for a first down at the 49-yard line. He was tackled by Sean Weston, sort of. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Rock Cartwright is a guy. They, they, they list him at 5'8", but he admitted yesterday 5'7 and a half. <laughs> and, and Rock has got that low pad level. And, and look at how thick those thighs are now. He squats over 900 pounds, and, and right there, Weston feels every every bit of it. I mean, that's, that's tough to wrap your, your arms around those legs of the Rock. Roberson on first down. He had 76 yards on nine trips before that carry, so now he's over 80 yards rushing. I'd say the turf toe, it may bother him at 3 o'clock this afternoon, but he doesn't feel it right now. Yeah, I remember the turf toe that I had. Uh, you take a little bit of a, a painkiller, you know, and, and that turf toe goes away for a while. But once the game's over and that painkiller goes away, that turf toe is, you don't, you, you don't sleep very well. I mean, it's just, it feels like it's throbbing right off the end of your foot. Second down and five. Here comes Roberson again. And this time Peroni hangs in there. Evan Peroni makes the play, the 270-pound senior from Houston. You know, the thing, uh, the thing that I like about, about Rock Cartwright is, is how he is complete as a football player. I think that the Tennessee Titans would love to have Rock Cartwright leading the way for Eddie George. You know, they, they lost their, they lost their, uh, their lead fullback, Lorenzo Neal, to the Cincinnati Bengals, and, and Eddie's not the same guy without that lead fullback, and Rock would be very, very unselfish in leading, leading Eddie to the promised land. I mean, don't be fooled by his height. Roberson on third and four, wants a bunch, and he had a man out there, and he couldn't hook up, hook up with Lloyd. And now it's fourth and three, and we'll see Mike Ronsick, the punter. So it won't be Bright this time, it'll be Ronsick. Oh, Bright is fighting that groin. I wonder if on that field goal he tweaked that groin again. And he's one of those uh, athletes. Kickers are like that sometimes where they're like thoroughbred racehorses. If there's just a little bit of a, a problem, they want to shut it down. And I wonder if uh, Bright has shut it down for the day based on his performance on that field goal attempt or lack thereof. 
Mickey Jones is going to watch this one sail over his head. And, Ro and Ronsick uh, didn't calculate the wind very well because that had no chance of being down inside the 10. to go in the second quarter. Let's get it downstairs again to Noxie. Jim? Right, thanks, Drew. Coming up on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report, we'll take a look at our Big 12 players of the week by the Southwestern Bell. Record-setting day by one Big 12 quarterback. Also, Dave's coaching tip, Big Dave Lapham, teams up with why Rock Cartwright of Kansas State. They go over blocking. We'll also have a report from Lincoln, Nebraska, in tonight's Nebraska-Texas Tech game that comes your way on the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Drew? All right, Jim, look forward to that. First and 10 from the 20 for the Aggies, and Ferris will come out with four wide outs and operate out of the gun. And he throws in the flat, and it is incomplete as he was trying to get Van Zant on a comeback. That's interesting, because uh, on first down, A&M has been spectacular, averaging 9.3 yards per play on first down. They've had a lot of big plays on first down. A lot of uh, Ferris's plays down the football field have been on first down. Here he is on the day completing 70% of his passes for over a football field in, in yards and a couple of touchdowns. Nice day. Joseph. And he's driven back after a couple of yards. Ben Lieber. Involved in the play again, also Corey White. You know, on, on the first down pass that Ferris threw the out, Dino Babers and Ferris were concerned about the crown of this football field a little bit, and that's where the crown comes into play when you throw into the sideline and throw it downhill. I mean, if you're Kansas State, if you're L and, and you're trying to throw the football downhill to your to your, your little tailback, who's five seven with the crown, you factor the crown in and you're trying to get it to Darren Sproles, you got problems. I mean, that's a tough throw to make. Especially if you're used to practicing and playing your home games on a field that doesn't have a crown. And down right. at Kyle Field, there isn't a prominent crown. But here at Wagner Field, there is. And that's a, that's a great point, because if you're at the top of the crown, you throw it toward the sideline. Trajectory difference. Yeah. Look at these guys. It look, look, looks like they're cut off at the waist. You look across the football field, their legs are gone. You know, that's how that's how much of a drop-off there is. You can't see Seth McKinney from, you know, like, I mean, that's, that's amazing. Hey, Dave, you'd lose me if I was on the other side. Yeah, huh? yeah, you'd, you'd have to raise your hand. I know. So, so, you know you, I was going to play football for the Aggies back in 94, but decided to play baseball instead after I was chosen with the 11th overall pick by the Pirates. And by the way, I was chosen one pick ahead of a guy named Nomar Garcia Para, who Nomar. played his college baseball at Georgia Tech. My man, Boston Red Sox, Nomar. That's right, you're, you're a Bostonian. Yeah, that's right. Love the Red Sox. Nomar uh, could get healthy. He is one of my favorite players. My question is, why did the Pirates uh, not pick Nomar? I'm glad they did, because the Red Sox were able to, but that's a mis-evaluation of time. <laughs> okay. We'll tell you who they selected in the moment because right. he's a pretty talented guy. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. 2.27 to go. The Aggies looking at third and seven. Taylor in motion. Wow. What an explosive pass rush that was. Henry Bryant. Henry Bryant. And that is his first sack of the season. Boy, he absolutely stunned Ferris. That's a blown assignment. He's not touched. Turn back protection. Guard turn, a tackle turned out. Guard turned inside. And Henry Bryant says, nobody's touching me. <laughs> I'm going to take off and go get the quarterback. That's a blown protection up front by the offensive line. And you don't see it much. That's just the seventh sack they've allowed all year. Right. So K-State looks like they'll get great field position. Lock it at the 45 right now. And punting into the wind is Skates. He'll hit it around the goal line. 
And Wes Bartovich turns to John Laurie and says, we want a timeout. We want to make sure we have a protection straight. 136 to go in the second quarter. The answer to our Sitco We Know You, selected right before Nomar Garcia Para, was quarterback Mark Farris, who spent five years in the minor leagues in the Pirate organization, a first baseman. And he finally said, like Chris Wenke, that right. uh, I'm going to go back and play college football. And you credit R.C. Slocum. You know, when Mark Farris decided to play baseball, R.C. stayed in touch with him because he was going to go to Texas A&M or play baseball, chose baseball, and R.C. said, I still love you. And, and because uh, he continued that relationship, Farris eventually came back to A&M. And what's interesting, right now at least, Mark Farris says he's coming back for his senior year right. as a 27-year-old. And you know he has a future in the National Football League. No question about it. Let's take a look at, uh, at what happened up front with, with the offensive line. Here, you have, the, you have the guard down and the tackle turning out. Nobody blocks Brian. I mean, it's, you know, you have to, you have to at least, from a protection standpoint, take care of it. Guard turns down, tackle turns out, Bryant's untouched. That's just a brain cramp up front that, that caused quarterback sack. Well, the first thing Ferris did was tuck away the football. Yeah, he did show some ball security. It wasn't his blind side. He saw it coming. Even though it came quickly and violently, he was able to secure the rock. So let's see if K-State sets up the return or goes after the punt. They're coming after it. And a very good job by Skates getting it out of there, but the wind holds uh -oh. it up. And fortunately for Lockett, the ball goes out of bounds because he touched it. But it goes out of bounds at the 32, so a very short field with plenty of time. 1.31 to go for Kansas State, and the punt ends up going just 21 yards. And for Kansas State, they have one timeout remaining. Well, now another opportunity for Kansas State. They went on the 10-play drive and took almost seven and a half minutes off the clock, but Taco Wallace dropped the potential touchdown and then Bright missed the short field goal to see if they can get on the board with this opportunity. Underneath throw to Lloyd. He's going to do the smart thing and get out of bounds. He wasn't going to get many more yards. Davis and Penwright were right there, so he'll take his eight, and he stops the clock with 125 to go in the quarter. As you say, Drew, time is not a huge factor here. Execution is. And, and really, execution is what cost them missed opportunities prior to. I mean, no, no contact, drop ball by Taco Wallace, and then uh, miss hitting a kick in the field goal. Probably still have uh -oh. enough time for option, but Can't that's not that. going to help. Mark Martin went on one, and the snap count was something else. Martin saying that the defense jammed his signals. Prior to the snap, ball start offense, five yards, replay, second down. And, and really, and, and Bill Snyder trying to back that plea up, but what happens a lot of times is the defense will make a call to shift the front or make a change right in the middle of the offense's cadence, and you're as a lineman saying, the next sound I hear, I'm getting off the football. And sometimes it's the defensive guy making the sound as he orchestrates the defense and it makes you jump prematurely. Here's Sproles with the great quicks. He'll be about a yard short of a first down. Robertson, along with Rocky Bernard, make the tackle. He is a blur. He's a little blur, but he is a blur. How do you find him? The thing about him, when you look at the size of Sproles, so diminutive, he hides him. Look at him in the sideline. He's hard to find. He hides amongst those big offensive linemen, and then he pops out of there. All of a sudden, it's like, who is that guy? Where'd he come from? Scoby and Cartwright. Here's the option on third and one. And Scoby led the first down and more. Boy, he turned on the accelerator. First and goal at the four. When he planted, did he fly up the field? He sure did. He sure did. When he planted that back foot, he was he was up the football field. And Jared Morris put a big shot on L. Ro Roberson. L. Roberson holds on to this football to the last instant and gets nailed. And he throws, he pitches the football to Scoby. And Scoby's up the football field for very positive yards. Scobie and Cartwright. It's Scobie with a lead block, and he'll get to the three. Wow. He's stopped by Ty Warren. Wow. That was a big play at the line of scrimmage. 
Now with the clock moving, 27, 26, you have one timeout left, and a little bit confused look right now for Kansas State. Roberson's gonna try to get the ball snapped. They want six, obviously, not three. Here's the option. Roberson, pitch, and score for the end zone. Touchdown, what an effort. What an effort by Josh Scobie, the senior from Oklahoma City. Short fields. Taking advantage of short fields and defending short fields sometimes is what changes momentum in a football game. And Josh Scobie was not going to be denied. Got inside that pylon for a touchdown. Bright just snuck the extra point through. 14 to 7. A bit of a Bronx cheer because Kansas State missed an extra point last week in their loss down in Lubbock to Texas Tech. But the Wildcats are back in it. And L. Roberson has been very, very efficient, executing the option all day long. He's taken a lot of hits. Scobie's the ultimate, the eventual pitch man. But watch Roberson down the line of scrimmage. Watch Rock make his block. Oh, Roberson will get hit, and, and Penwright makes a hit on him. And, and really, Bonovich gets off of Rock's block decently enough, but he cannot control and corral Scobie. Scobie's a big, powerful kid. Penwright gets the lick on L. Roberson. He pitches the football. Bonovich can't finalize, and Scobie does. That's a tremendous effort. Sixth, seventh touchdown of the year for Scobie. He was over 100 yards last week in Lubbock. And the short field pays off. The defense helped them out. They get a sack. And they forced the Aggies to punt into the wind. They had to traverse only 32 yards. Yeah, and really the, the mistake up front by the offensive line was kind of the catalyst. When Henry Bryant came in unblocked for the quarterback sack, it dictated bad field position. And then a poor punt gave the short field. The option, L. Roberson, almost 150 yards rushing, executing that option. Having him available is huge. Mickey Jones puts a knee down, and Ferris will come out and in all likelihood put his knee down and end the first half with seven seconds left. Boy, if there's a school that needed a touchdown, it's Kansas State. You're right about that. They've had a lot of shutout quarters on characters through this season, group. Oh, think about it. The last two weeks, Dave, they've been held to 25 points. They lost 16-6 to at home to Colorado, 38-19 last week to Texas Tech. You have to go back to 1992, the last time in back-to-back -back games they scored fewer than 25 points. You have to go back to 89, the last time they lost back-to-back -back home games. That's right. Long time ago. That was Bill Snyder's first season. Yep. So the first half closes in Manhattan, Kansas at Wagner Field. 14-7 Aggies as Jim Knox is with Bill Snyder. Jim? All right, Coach, 148 yards running the football in the first half. You get a big lift right before half, less than 20 seconds to go. Scobie gets the touchdown. You feel you have the momentum going in? Well, we needed that. That's heck of a lot better than not having the touchdown. But, you know, that's a lot of yards on the ground with only having seven points on the board. So we've got to make some plays in the passing game as well. I don't think we can do it all just with the run. But if we can get some balance in our offense, then maybe we've got a better chance. Right, thank you, Coach yeah. Drew. All right, Jim, thank you very much. 14 to 7, the Aggies and Wildcats. A good one going in Manhattan. Coming up, the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Welcome to the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. Back inside Wagner Field in Manhattan, Kansas, the Fighting Aggie Band now performing on the field. We have hit halftime, and Texas A&M leads Kansas State by the score of 14 to 7. And hello again, everyone. I am Jim Knox, and we will kick off the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report with our Southwestern Bell Big 12 Players of the Week. We'll start on the offensive side of the football, and what a game last week for Texas Tech quarterback Cliff Kingsbury. Against Kansas State, Kingsbury tossed 
for over 400 yards, also four touchdowns, and that helped the Red Raiders knock off Kansas State by the score of 38 to 19. Now to our Southwestern Bell Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week, Colorado's Joey Johnson came up with a huge play against Texas A&M with the Aggies driving, going for the go-ahead score. Johnson picks up the fumble. Mark Ferris gets hit. Johnson goes 52 yards for the touchdown as Colorado held on to beat the Aggies 31-21. Joey Johnson of Colorado, the Southwestern Bell Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. Coming up next, Dave's coaching tips. Big Dave teams up with Rock Cartwright as they go for blocking from that fullback position right after this. And continuing to perform at halftime, Texas A&M leading Kansas State 14 to 7. And welcome back to the Sonic America's Drive-In Halftime Report. This week on Dave's Coaching Tips, Big Dave teams up with Rock Cartwright of Kansas State, and Rock dishes out some bone-crushing blocks. Last year in the Cod Bowl against Tennessee, Kansas State rushed for almost 300 yards. The offensive line was really good, but the blocking fullback was spectacular. With me today is that blocking fullback, Rock Cartwright, my favorite college football player and the best blocker in college football. Pound for pound, this guy gets it done better than anybody. Rock, take us through some uh, blocks today. Let's first talk about the isolation block. You're the lead blocker for the tailback on an inside linebacker. What are you doing? First of all, you coming. You want your head outside. You want to be lower than, the, lower than the defender. Keep your head outside. Drive your feet. Drive your feet. Drive your feet. Drive your feet until the whistle blows. So it's hand placement and then driving those feet. Yeah. All right, so now I'm outside linebacker or I'm a cornerback and run support, and you're coming. They're running a sweep, and you got to cut. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Don't throw through early. Keep throw. Put your foot on the guy's foot. Throw, cut, and then roll over in case the guy tries to get you and you up there to cut him and just keep you rolling. That's the technique that we was taught here. So you, you cut and then roll yep. to make sure you finish him. All right, finally now, blitz pickup, and you're outstanding at this. Your quarterback's in the pocket. Here comes the outside backer, inside backer, and you're going to stop him. Stay low, put one foot back. And stay, just the main object is just to stay low because you stay low if you raise up and you don't have any base. So, you know, just the main object is to just stay low. Stay low, stay under the pads, and good hand placement. Yep. And, and blocking isn't a big key, just wanting to attitude? Mainly just the effort that you give. That's basically it. Effort, and that's the key to any successful block. Effort, persistence, wanting to. All you young fullbacks, take heed. Thanks, guys. Coming up next, we will check the Big 12 scoreboard. Some good matchups today. Also, report from Lincoln, Nebraska on tonight's Nebraska-Texas Tech game. Stay with us. Sun-drenched day at Wagner Field in Manhattan, Kansas. And at halftime, the Aggies leading the Wildcats 14-7. And back upstairs, along with Dave Lapham, I'm Drew Goodman. You know, the first three possessions all ended in punts for Kansas State. But then they found some creases in the option game. And El Roberson may have that turf toe, but he looked pretty good to me in the first 30 minutes. Well, he sure did. He ran the ball very effectively. He made great decisions in the option. El Roberson ended up running the ball 11 times for 82 yards, 7.5 yards of carry. And you're looking at his longest carry of 19 yards. And then the pitch holds it to the last minute. Scobie, touchdown, big play right before the half to get them back in the game. And this is the double move. Murphy beats Petey Fagans on the double move, and Ferris puts it right on the money. And that pass right there is the difference in this football game right now. Farmer was able to run the football pretty well for Texas A&M, but it's been Mark Ferris in the air. He's got a couple of touchdown passes at the break. 14-7, to the Aggies leading the Wildcats. Back to the third quarter next. within these walls. Breezy, gorgeous afternoon in Manhattan, Kansas. And let's go down to the field. Jim Knox is with R.C. Slocum, whose team leads by a touchdown. Coach, you have to be pleased. You have the 14-7 to at halftime lead. Now you go into the second half. What can we look forward to as far as stopping the option of Kansas State? Well, hopefully we made some adjustments uh, at, at halftime that will help us defend the option. That's really the only thing we've had any problem. I like our team's playing hard. I'm proud of the way we're playing. We just have to do a better job on the Play. Uh, we, we've been in uh, uh, misplayed it several times and allowed them to score. Disappointed they scored there before the half. We've got to come out and try to get some momentum back in the ballgame. Coach, thanks for the time. Good luck in the second half, group. All right, Jim, you and I are big R.C. Slocum fans. He has done a tremendous job at College Station, as has Bill Snyder here. Both are in their 13th seasons, and both among the winningest active coaches in college football. 
Jared Bright will kick it deep. Sammy Davis along with Mickey Jones, the return man for the Texas Aggies. They lead it 14 to seven, very much still in the South Division race of the Big 12. Sammy Davis from the five, check it, it's Jones. And he'll get to the 25 yard line, the flag comes in. It should be an illegal block on a and that may cost him some yards. They'll start inside their 20-yard line, and it is going to go against Texas A&M on the return. So now Kansas State will be afforded... Return, illegal block in the back. First down, 10-yard penalty. Kansas State will be afforded good defensive field position to work with here. A&M will be backed up offensively. Uh, R.C. Slocum uh, earlier drew as uh, the Kansas State fans are excited about the conclusion of the first half. R.C. Slocum, the only active coach in the NCAA with at least 10 seasons under his belt without a losing, without a losing season. That's pretty strong. Well, they've got 18 straight years as a university, which is one of the top seven marks in college football. Number one, Nebraska, 39 straight winning seasons. Here's Farmer on the toss sweep. Penetration by Lieber, and Farmer's gonna lose three. Lieber and Tank. Lieber initial penetration, Tank with the finish. Look at the first half numbers, Dave. What jumps off the page at you? Well, obviously, like we've got here, the rushing yards. Look at that. I mean, when you outrush a football team by a football field, you usually have a lead. You're not down seven. Time of possession because of the running like that is in favor of Kansas State as well. No turnovers in this football game. Both teams doing a decent job on third down. It's been a very well-played game for the most part. Very cleanly played. Trying to work to Murphy. Good catch. He breaks a tackle. First down out to the 31-yard line. Fagans had him. They had a lot of contact. And Murphy able to come out of the break and get a little separation. And that's a big first down. I'll tell you what. Murphy is having his way with Fagans. Murphy is a freshman, Drew. Fagans is a good football player. Four interceptions on the season. Tied for third most in the, in the country. He's got them all bottled up. And Murphy escapes. I'll tell you what. He's got some good strength. So he overpowered Petey Fagans. Petey had him jammed up with bump and run technique and a little pivot route by Murphy, and he got the separation. Then Fagans missed the tackle. He's over 100 yards receiving now, Murphy, on five catches. Farmer, nowhere to go. Josh Buell and Friend stopped that around the line of scrimmage. Well, I think they got Josh Buell's attention today, not starting him. Yeah, they, they wanted to get the focus a little bit, and I think he's, uh, he's getting that done exactly. And Murphy, for the second straight week now, with over 100 yards in receptions, 146 against Colorado, and over 100 here against Kansas State. He's the go-to guy, five catches for 107. Kansas State hoping to trap Texas A&M deep because the Aggies are going into the wind right now. Second and ten. Here's the shuttle pass, and this is defended much better by the Wildcats. Went for a touchdown earlier on the goal line, and Schull knocks it down along with Jerry Tongiai. Third down in, in the long situation. Texas A&M didn't want to be in these third and longs either with uh, some shakeup in their offensive line as well. Alan Ruber, the young sophomore starting at left tackle, didn't want to put him in, in, tough, uh, in tough situations uh, as well. I should say at right tackle and left tackle is Jamie Hightower, the true freshman. So unusual for a true freshman to start on the O-line. Farris on third and seven rolls. Wobbly ball, and it's knocked away nicely by Duran Tyler. So Texas A&M will have to punt it into the wind. Texas. Taylor was the intended target. Tyler on Taylor. Texas A&M won, wanted to change the launch point again, Drew, and roll outside of Hightower, the true freshman, and take the pressure off of him. That time, though, uh, the ball floated a little bit on Ferris. Lockett, the dangerous return man, set up at the 35 right now. Good snap to skate. Oh. Coming. Wow. And they're going to call 
Green is roughing. And we'll see if it's a personal foul or not. If it's a personal foul, it's going to be a first down. They got a hold. Oh, they got a hold. Down. Okay. They, they held Newman. Newman ran underneath his leg. Newman came with speed off the edge, and they, they called the hold on, on Texas A&M. Didn't you think for a moment they were going to call the brush of the punter? Yeah, I thought they might call running into, you know, or roughing the punter, but... His, and from his perspective, Newman probably would have blocked the punt if he wasn't held, because Newman had the edge. And if you're Bill Snyder, you make him punt it again, don't you? Holding, the kicking team, 10 yards, free play, fourth down. Take a look at, uh, at Newman coming off the edge. Tremendous speed. He's at the top of the screen and watch him come. Comes around the corner, watch. Right there, you see the hole grab right there, just grabbing the jersey. And, uh, and, for, and doing that hold is Everett Smith. Newman gets the edge. Everett Smith grabs him and, and turns him around. And that's the penalty. Boy, K-State can get some nice field position here, Drew. That was a great look at it. You're right. That was a good picture. So Skates this time is going to hit it about his own 12-yard line. Fair catch at the 46. What's what, that? what is that? That's, a, that's Wes Bodovich a couple seconds late. Wes, Wes must have gotten pushed because he was out of control for about five yards there. Yeah, punt of 33 yards and about plus 15 on that exchange of punts. Right, right. Take a look at, uh, at Kansas State. Averaging 5.2 on first down. That's pretty good. Staying out of second and third and long a lot. Kick it. Uh -uh. Hadn't happened. Haven't kicked it well enough. And they've already got 14 points on the board in the half. Never mind 10 for the game. So executing the option so well on first down has kept them in this football game. And Dave, think of the missed opportunities. A touch, right. uh, maybe a touchdown pass or at least a first and goal pass dropped. And another post route to Ricky Lloyd that... He was wide open, and Roberson uh, misfired as Scobie takes the football on first down, crosses midfield, and he gets seven. Yeah, I agree with Coach Snyder's assessment at the half. When you are a Russian football team by 100 yards, you could have more than seven points on the board. The score should be reversed at, at, at worst-case scenario when you rush for almost 150 yards at the half. Josh Scobie averaging five yards a lug right now. He's got that touchdown, that key touchdown right before the half that got Kansas State back into the game momentum-wise. Ah, left tackle Martin lurched forward there, broke his three-point stance, and he's still complaining to the official about them jamming the signals up. I don't know. Martin seems to be the only one that's hearing. He's hearing voices. Try to snap. Ball start offense. Five yards. Replay second down. Did you ever deal with that in your career? Hearing voices, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of times, <laughs> a lot of times. Particularly after Joe Green or somebody head slapped me. I heard <laughs> bells, whistles, voices, everything. A, a crowd in your helmet. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you don't want to suffer a penalty there when you're, you're in good, good shape on second down. Second and, and short. Now you're looking at second and long because of a self-destruct at the line of scrimmage. And, and I'll tell you what Bill Snyder's saying, that that's the second time that the defense on the sideline, you see Bill Snyder talking to the referee about it, saying that, that uh, you know, they, they're jamming our signals, and the referee's going to go up to the Texas A&M front seven and say, hey, no more right at the snap of the football coming up with your defensive call and jamming the signals. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's being discussed out there. He definitely went out there and said something to Evan Peroni, who's lined up and has been most of the day over Matt Martin. And Martin complained about it both times, and he jumped. Roberson, and that's uh, throwing the flat, and maybe there's the compensation for the crown because you know Roberson's got a strong arm. Right. So it'll be third and nine. You know, coaches so often talk about the little things. The, the difference between winning and losing can be the little things. And you mentioned it earlier. Bill Snyder's team has been penalized quite a bit the last, uh, really, all season long. Right. That, that has been has been their biggest uh, two things. Number one, they've had more injuries to key players than he's ever had. And number two, they continue to beat themselves, which is uncharacteristic of the Bill Snyder team. Third and nine for Roberson. Penright coming. And this is complete to Taco Wallace, his first career catch, but not a lot of running room. And Roberson is slow to rise, and he has not gotten up yet. Penwright lit him up pretty good. 
And Roberson, you know, sometimes you can get bent, get bent awkwardly. And when you have a turf toe, uh, I think it might be more than turf toe problems for L right now, though, with the hit that Penwright took, put on him. But sometimes you get bent in awkward positions and re-aggravate that injury. And L is definitely dragging that left foot. He's re-aggravated that turf toe problem as he tries to brace himself to, to, to Penwright's hit. Here's Penwright on the edge coming. And boy, has he got tremendous speed, and he just buckles his legs. That, that, that injury right there might not have anything to do with the toe. His knee kind of went in one direction, and the rest of his body went in another. And it's on the same side, though, the left leg. So if he's got turf toe plus another aggravation to another area of his leg, well, it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough for him. Mike Ronsick will punt on fourth and four. In the NFL, that's not allowed. You can't hit a quarterback like that. You can't hit a quarterback at all in the NFL anymore. Look at that. And Ronsick kicked it up the elevator shaft. And fortunately for Kansas State, they get an enormous bounce, a beautiful bounce inside the two. How about to about the one foot line? Wow. Man. Punt of 46, net of 46. We have a problem. Go ahead, Apollo. Downtown Manhattan, Kansas, Aggieville, where we had to take our producer, Bob Steinfeld, and bring him in the hotel, kicking and screaming the other night. Absolutely. 14 to 7, the Aggies on their own one, and Farris trying to get a little breathing room, gets out to about the one and a half. Well, Drew, this is how Kansas State has stayed in the football game, field position. With te uh, Texas a and backed up like this, their average drive start is their own 18-yard line, whereas Kansas State's average drive start is their 36-yard line. You might multiply 18 hidden yards by seven possessions each at this point. You know, you're, you're talking over a football field of hidden yards that has kept Kansas State in the battle. Well, one of the things going through Bill Snyder's mind, I'm sure, the fact that he has the win here in the third quarter. They want to throw it. And the fade to Murphy, well covered by Duran Tyler. It'll be third down and nine. Let's get an update on L. Roberson from Jim Knox, who's everywhere today. Jim? Drew, it appears to be the turf toe. Of course, Kansas State does not release injuries, but from our vantage point, the turf toe is bothering L. Roberson right now. They're looking at him on the bench, so looks like L. Roberson may not be able to go. Well, you know what? He's got his helmet on, and... Generally speaking, when the helmet's on, Dave, you played a long, long time. The helmet stays on, and you stay in, right? Yeah, I, I think he's going to try to give it a go, but that little piggy on the left uh, foot there is not going to go to market, but it ain't going home either, I'll tell you that. He's going to try to continue to go. And the Aggies are going to have to burn a timeout. 14-7, to 7 they lead. We're back in a moment. drive-ins and your friends at Dr. Pepper and by Sitco your neighborhood Sitco is proud to support today's athletes Sitco we know you huge play here third and nine from the one for the Aggies Ferris to throw out of his own end zone he gets it to Taylor who's going to get to the four great job by Duran Tyler he had a nice series in coverage the entire sequence. Bought a couple of more yards for the punter. Now, he won't be totally backed up. Skates won't be tightrope in the back line of his end zone, but he'll only have about a yard or two buffer there. He steps on the back line of the end zone. It's a safety. And you got to figure Kansas State's coming after this one hard. We got a great snapper in Chance Pierce. He bullets it back there. And this is a great effort into the win. To the 45. Lockett trying to reverse field. That's wow. not going to work. Wow. He's going to lose six or seven on the return. Bonovich flies down and gets him on the other side of the 50-yard line. It's a punt of 41. And the return goes the wrong direction. Uh, we talked to Bill Snyder yesterday about all the key injuries he's suffered this year. 
No, we haven't. And you know, but you know, that's you just have to. Uh, that's that's a big part of the equation. Uh, you know, and the way we've always tried to fortify that in the past is okay. Whoever slides into that spot is going to have to step up and, and be able to perform as well as the next guy. And we've we've always been able to do that. And now, when you when the numbers increase, then it becomes a little bit more a little bit more difficult. You don't always have somebody propping you up on on each side, but. Uh, but we have an experience that like we have this year. How about the big dancing bear? The pitch man. Joe Hall came up limping. Joe Hall is a definite hitch in the get along as he's trying to run it off. He's motivated. You know, he, he reminded me of Jerome Bettis right there. The way he was shaking and wiggling a little bit at the conclusion of that run. But Joe Hall is definitely hurt as he works his way to the Kansas State sideline. But, man, he showed some quick feet, I mean, a la Jerome Bettis. He's bigger than Jerome, but he's got feet like Jerome. Quick dance feet. Cartwright's in there, and Rock takes the football, and Rock gets to the 30-yard line, a pickup of three or four. Rock, Rock. <laughs> Well, Joe, you see Big Joe, Dave, we, we were here a couple weeks ago, and Big Joe was a blonde. Yeah, yeah, Big Joe's running the gamut. But Big Joe's not doing well right now. Big Joe's got a lower extremity injury. I think it's to his left leg. But I'll tell you what, he, the option, once again, the pitch man to Joe Hall, the option still creasing Texas A&M with regularity. And that's surprising. You're talking about a great run defense. Blitz coming, they pick it up, Roberson slips a tackle, Roberson to the 20-yard line, another first down for K-State. I'll tell you, the key to that was a nice block by Nick Warren. He sustained contact and stayed after it. Watch Nick Warren at the conclusion of this play. He locks on, and the read is being made by L. Roberson, his man. Warren stays after him, maintains contact, and Roberson cuts up inside him. That's a great job of sustaining the block and giving your quarterback an opportunity. 91 yards on the ground for Roberson. Cartwright follows a block, breaks a couple of tackles. Ben Rettley in the hole made the initial block and Cartwright then did a little BYOB, be your own blocker. That's right. <laughs> and, and both of these football teams have fullbacks that can run the football. Both defenses were concerned about the opposition fullback and Rock Cartwright making them pay a little bit there. I think the team that has the fullback that runs the best wins this game. All right now it's the Rock man. And this play... Ball start. Sloan didn't yeah. happen. I'm dead. This is another penalty in the red zone is unacceptable. Yeah, false start offense. Five yards. That, Replay. Second down. Dave, that's got to be four or five false starts today. And a couple of them are occurring in the red zone. That's where you cannot afford. You cannot afford penalties in the red zone. You don't want to make mental and physical errors in the red zone. It's happening too often to Kansas State. That's why they don't have the points on the board they should have with all the yards rushing they have. It's a track meet inside the, from 20 to 20, but when they get in the red zone, they stop running it because of the, their self-destruction. Now it's second and six. Roberson will change the play. Late pitch to Scoby, and Scoby gets a couple of yards. He delivers a blow on Terrence Keel. And, and every time, you know, L's holding him, Dave, to the absolute last instant. And every time he gets hit, it starts to wear on him. Ty Warren puts the hit on L. Roberson, and L. Roberson fighting through that turf toe. And watch the lick that he takes from Ty Warren. Gets hit, and watch the... That's the contact on Scoby. Texas A&M is certainly not shying away from the contact. We're just not executing against the option as well as they want to assignment lines. They're piling up the yards on the ground. Here's Cartwright on a little trap, and he's going to get close to a first down on a third down. I, I, think, go. I think you have to, Dave. You're talking about a, a team that's 0-3 in conference, and right. you're talking about the wind being at your back right now. You have all kinds of upside and very little downside. You've struggled in the kicking game as is. They're two or six on field goals on the season now, 33%. You've got to go. you got to take advantage of the opportunity. You've got to score a touchdown here and not settle for field goal. 
finalize this opportunity. Two tight ends, Scobie and Cartwright on fourth and one. Here comes Scobie, and he gets airborne, and he gets the first down. And a great block by Cartwright on Rodriguez at the, on the edge of the defense. Nice lead block. The offensive line came off the ball well, and my man Rock was a rock again. Watch the kickout block. Boop, get underneath, finish, drive, keep your feet going, taking Rodriguez out of the play, and Scobie up and over for the first and goal. Seven plays already, eating the clock up, time of possession. There's your man, Dave Sproles is in. Well, he's a big play waiting to happen, isn't he? What's he do again when he gets it? Quick, Don, see ya. He's got it now. And his quicks get him to the line of scrimmage. That was well defended. Amon Simon was there, and he had help. 542, 541, clock moving in the third quarter. We told you that points would come at a premium today, and the Aggies holding on 14 to 7 right now against the Kansas State team that has lost three straight for the first time in almost a decade. And in the play. He's got Lockett and Lloyd in the slot up top. Oh, yeah, that's nice. knocked away. Good job by Keel. As he got in the hole, he was looking for Lloyd on a slant. Keel read L. Roberson's eyes, and L. Roberson's eyes took Keel right to the alley, and he swatted it to the turf with his left hand. Keels, watch him right, watch him. He watches the quarterback. Looks at the quarterback's eyes. L. Roberson's locked in. Keel says, I'm taking it away. Nice little underneath uh, drop there by Keels. Nice underneath support. Wallace and Lockett up top. Lloyd to the near side. Third and goal. Screen set up, and that one never really got going. And now on fourth and a bunch, you're going to have to bring the field goal unit in. Well, the red zone continues to be the twilight zone for the Kansas State Wildcats. Penalty and mis-execution. No turnovers still in this football game. But this is a this is a big kick. Left hash mark. Left hash mark for Bright. Bright can't think too much. Just concentrate on the mechanics and finish. 27 yards away. Good snap, good hold. And it hit the crossbar and went over. Jeez. <laughs> wow. This hit that thing. He hit the top third of the ball, it looked like, on that one. 14 to 10. He kicked the field Necro knuckleball. Watch this. Man. It's now a four-point game with 4.59 to go. Jared Bright gets the field goal, and it was actually blocked, partially blocked, by Christian Rodriguez. Yeah, Rodriguez, a little ricochet block here. Rodriguez gets the penetration. His right hand hits the right hand. He's trying to block it with his left, but his right hand reroutes it, so Jared Bright with enough leg strength to get it over the crossbar. Sammy Davis from the goal line. Out to the 29, the kicking game uncharacteristically this year has been problematic for Bill Snyder. He addressed it yesterday. He struggled with finding somebody that could put the ball between the uprights. We're pretty good at hitting the upright. You know, we've done a ton of that. But uh, they're not giving us any points for that right now. And it's, you know, it's young guys that, that make a, I mean, they make a tremendous effort and they're focused and they, uh, and they care and they want to, et cetera. But you know how it is with kicking. I mean, you, you miss the ball by a quarter of an inch and it's, it's not, you're not going to score any points. Well, that time it was protection problems, not kicking problems. That, that starts with protection as well. But he hit another uh, he hit crossbar. Yeah, he hit not crossbar, not yeah. upright this yeah. time. Here's Farmer. He had 52 yards before that trip, and he gets about four on first down. Andrew Schull 
Gets credit for the tackle. It'll be second down and six. Every kicker will tell you that the key on any successful field goal is the snap, the hold, and the kick, plus the protection up front. All of it has to be in sync. David, last five drives for the Aggies, four punts and halftime. Wow. Kansas State's defense uh, getting after a little bit. No turnovers in this football game for either team. Well played in that regard. Farmer, Josh Buell, he's played a nice football game. Also, Show. Let's check the scouting report again for the Aggies, see how they've graded out. Well, ball security, no turnovers. That's big on the road. That's huge. They haven't outrushed Kansas State by any stretch. That's why it's the football game that it is. And they did a good job of scoring first. They put the first 14 points to the board but right there. Kansas State in the game because they've outrushed them by a football field and a half. This looks like a passing down, third and a long six. Paris is 10 of 15 in the game. And Murphy, first time today, he's unable to come up with the football, but he was stretched out. Three and out, forced by Kansas State. Let's watch Murphy come out of the break. Does he come out cleanly? He plants on Petey Fagans and just stumbles slightly, just a little bit of a stumble that disrupts the timing. Just a little bit of a hitch. They had a safety playing a little robber underneath at Milton Proctor, so they're aware of Murphy. Yeah, they're starting to bracket him a little bit now, and that kid is, uh, is the real deal. He understands the nuances of running patterns. Skates pumping into the wind, pressure coming. He gets it away. Man, he kicks this a mile high. And Lockett oh. drops the football. Oh. The Aggies are on it at the plus 25. I jinxed them with the no turnovers. You don't want to make the big mistake. You want to make the big play in the kicking game. And Lockett makes the big mistake if the Aggies do come up with this football, which it looks like they have. Tug of war right now. Josh Buell. Excuse me, not Josh Buell. It's uh, Jante Buell. He's got it. He's got it under. You know, Corral went right through his hands, hit him in the waist, and falls forward. And, and Lockett has caught football after football after football. But even the even the great ones have their problems. And, and Lockett just not secure enough of that football. Short field for the Aggies right here. You don't want to overstate it, but that's an enormous turnover. Oh gosh, it's, it's monstrous. 3-10 left, and again, you have the wind at your back. All the momentum on your side, trailing by four. Now a short field for the Aggies. And this pass to Taylor's broken up at the line of scrimmage. Andrew Schull, winning his first start of the year, has played very well. He has, and one thing that defensive coordinator Phil Bennett wanted to do better as a defense was defend the short field, the sudden change, the quick turnaround of momentum. He said that that hasn't been happening as well as he'd like it to happen. You know, sometimes you, you're going to have to defend the short field. He said, we can't give up touchdowns. We're going to hold the water. Murphy and Taylor left. Weber and Farmer in the eye. Three-step drop, slant behind Murphy. Newman had him. It'll be third and ten. Well, they are staying away from Newman. That's about the first time I can think he's been challenged pretty much on the day. There's a guy that uh, is highly regarded, Newman. 5'11", 185 pounds, and can really run. Mark Ferris started off something like seven for eight, if I recall. Now his numbers are, are, are getting a little bit more back to what you'd expect. I mean, seventh rate, you can't continue that all day long. And Kansas State tightened it up in their pass defense. Ferris unloads. Tyler again breaks it up. Great play coming back on the football. He was man for man with Jamar Taylor. Well, Ferris, the ball did not come out of his hand properly and kind of fluttered. He didn't have velocity on it. You can see what he sees as Ferris rolls to his left. Ball's airborne and a great recognition of the route by Tyler. And he broke on the football and very easily with his left hand knocked it to the turf. I'd say that Kansas State defended the short field exceptionally well. Three snaps, no yards gained. 
Now it's a 42-yard attempt into the win by Cody Skates. Skates this year just 5 of 12. Exactly. He's uh, been punting it well, but not, not this facet of the game. He gets a lot of football, oh, though. in there. That's a great field goal by Cody Skates into the win from 42 yards away. When he played that wind. I mean, that ball went with the way he's looking at it, right to left. And he played that hook pretty darn effectively. So the separation goes back to a touchdown. It's now 17 to 10. You remember the 98 championship game. Michael Bishop of the Wildcats, number one in the country in the Big 12 championship game. The game would go double overtime, and the hero would be Sir Parker. Out of the backfield, he gets in the end zone, and the Aggies win it. The big upset, 36-33. They came from 15 down in the fourth quarter to win it in two overtimes, and that ruined the national title hopes at K-State. It sure did. They ended up going to a, a bowl game against Purdue. They lost that football game as well, losing two games in a row, the Big 12 championship game, as well as the Alamo Bowl. I believe it was to Purdue. They fell out of the uh, BCS opportunity courtesy of the upset that was put on the board by R.C. Slocum's Texas A&M Aggies. How is that that football game? It was yeah. at the CWA Dome in St. Louis. And I'll tell you what, that was a great, great game. Escapes. Hammers it in the direction of Lockett. He circles into his end zone. And Lockett won't get to the 20. Cut down at the 16. Trying to make up for the fumbled punt. I thought that was a questionable decision on his part. And it turned out that he didn't get the uh, field position he could have if he let it go in the end zone. Let's pay a visit to Jim Knox in a 17-10 game. Jim, what do you have? Okay, thank you, Drew. Jamie Hightower doing a nice job. Offense attack for A&M. Whereas number 75 also plays tight end, but the big difference here is he has to switch his numbers from 75 to 90. He has a zipper on the side. It's tough to get this big jersey over 363 pounds. So Hightower wears the zip-up jersey when he plays tight end, guys. Well, it's tailored, Knox. It looks like a nice little French cut tailored look there. <laughs> French cut for a large man. Yeah. Scoby gets a couple. Let me ask you about that. Hightower plays for Texas A&M, a true freshman playing on the offensive line. Now, in your days at Syracuse, you started as a sophomore. You weren't eligible to play on the varsity as a right. freshman back then. How difficult is that? It's, uh, it's a tremendous challenge. Because uh, Hightower physically can compete. You know, I mean, he's big and strong enough, but mentally, not having played at that level of football, the speed of the game, all the adjustments that you have to make, I mean, that's outstanding what he's done there. Boy, another, another false start, it looks like. Kansas State backed up. You don't want to. False start offense. Five yards, replay, second down. The penalties continue. That's uh, that's got to be a handful, at least a fistful of false starts on Kansas State. There's uh, there's big Mr. Hightower. Now there's no question when you look at, 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 at Jamie Hightower, there's no question that he physically has got the tools. Well, I don't care when you're 18 years old and going and adjusting the speed of the game and, the, and playing against 22 year old guys. That's a different ball. He was a parade All-American recruited by everybody. Roberson, I mean, all afternoon to throw oh, it. Wow. He throws a pick. Gamble will have it inside the 10-yard line. Boy, he played such a clean game turnover-wise. Both teams, Kansas State, though, at the end of the third quarter here, crumbling from a turnover standpoint. One on special teams, Lockett fumbling a punt return, and then Gamble becomes the primary target of L. Roberson here. The protection is outstanding. Maximum protection. The back stays in. And he's got all day to throw the football. Tight end stays in. Back is picking it up. And, and he just stares down his receiver. Stares him down. Stares him down. And throws it behind Scobie and Gamble benefits. First and goal at the nine. Farmer with a large opening. Farmer smelling end zone. Gets to the one. Buell held on. Well, Kansas State defended the short field the last time. This is the, a real, real short field. And I think uh, I think a lot of the uh, a lot of the juice is, uh, has leaked out of their tank. 
because right now I think they're just a disenchanted defensive football team saying, how many times do you expect us to come out here and defend a short field like this? Coaches say it every week. It's to be tired, but it's accurate. Turnover is the most important stat of all. Here's Weber, the touchdown man. That's a touchdown and two-hand touch. And for Joe Weber, his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. Touchdown to one-hand touch. They never laid a fingernail on him, I don't think. I mean, that, and that's the fullback. Both teams utilizing their fullbacks in the running game. And they just ran a little fullback dive to Joe Weber. Remember last year, a guy named Toombs really hurt Kansas State particularly in the red zone, scoring touchdowns and, and increasing them with fullback runs, and whoever did it once again here. Skates makes it 24-10. to 10. Joe Weber getting in the end zone. The Aggies by two scores. Got a locket fumble and then a pick by L. Roberson. And what was a four-point game a couple of moments ago is now a 14-point game. Skates kicks a knuckleball. Newman gathers it in at the five. This may be one of the fastest men in college football as he gets to the 30-yard line. Last year, he won the Big 12 100-meter title. Randall Webb made the tackle on special teams. You can see the body language of Kansas State, you know, fighting through the hangover back-to-back -back giveaways. Shoulder pad slumped a little bit, and then on the other sideline, obviously, Joe Weber and his troops excited about being up two touchdowns at this point. 255, David. That's what Kansas State has outrushed Texas A&M, but the official wow. scoreboard balls on the ground. It's still loose. You have another turnover and another right. touchdown. Right. Hit right in the end zone. The ball hit Rock Cartwright. L held on to the ball to the last minute as he pitched it and hit his fullback, deflected off his fullback by my perspective, and as it bounced off a rock, it was a free, free football. Henright scooped it up and scored. Amazing. Back to back to back. Turnovers, giveaways. Unreal. Kansas State has come unraveled. This is a new definition of self-destruction right now. They're not shooting toes off, they're shooting feet off the legs. Skates can make it 31 to 10. Half a thought ago, it was 14-10, and all of the momentum was with the home team. I thought that the ball ricocheted off of Rock Cartwright. It looked to me like the pitch. L's holding onto the pitch until the last minute, trying to get the ball to Scobie. Watch the ball hits off of Rock Cartwright and, and bounces to the turf. And Penwright jumps all over. Watch it hit off. See it hit Rock Cartwright right on the five and glances backwards on an angle. So the relationship between fullback, pitch man, and quarterback a little distorted. And then the pressure on L caused the early pitch. The ball's on the ground and Penwright picks it up and sees golden goal post. It's been 41 games since a fumble has been returned for a touchdown for the wrecking crew defense. The last guy to do it was Warwick Holdman. He was a linebacker, played outside, as I recall, and Gerard Penwright's an outside backer. Boy, Penwright has got another quarterback sack, nine and a half now in the season. So he's adding to his Big 12 uh, lead total there, as well as tied for third in the country coming in. And then he gets a touchdown off of a fumble recovery. I'd say that's a gold star on that young man's forehead right there. That's a pretty good day. You know how you used to get the gold stars when you got 100 on your spelling bee in grammar school? Yeah. Penwright just got a nice, a nice one there. Say so. Lockett. Lockett's out the door for a moment to the 35. You want to talk about efficient use of the clock? In the last two minutes and eight seconds, Texas A&M has scored 17 points. And, and really, courtesy a lot of it, Kansas State saying, here's the football. You know, I mean, they're just amazing. When you get a defensive score like that, it's just a tremendous momentum builder for your team and killer for the other. Mark Dunn is now in at quarterback. And he's limping around a little bit, Drew. He's got a bruised thigh. Dunn took a beating at Texas Tech. He's not 100% physically. Joe Hall. Oh, the ball. Stripped it. 
They're going to give it to uh, Keel. No, they're going to say Hall had a knee down after picking up nine and a half. I mean, now it's like a contagious. Yeah. It's a virus. It is. It is. And it all started with uh, Lockett mishandling a punt return. And then it all fell apart from that point on. Sports are funny. Football is a funny game. You have a team that hasn't done this in years, and, and all of a sudden it's a team that doesn't have a lot of confidence, right. and it seems like those things happen to teams that don't have confidence. It's fragile. It's a fragile situation, and right now the psyche of Kansas State is cracked. Three quarters done in Manhattan. The complexion has changed in the last couple of minutes. It's 31-10 Aggies. Major League turn of events in Manhattan, Kansas, 31-10. The Aggies leading K-State. Back upstairs with Dave Lapham. I'm Drew Goodman. Turnovers, turnovers, turnovers. That's what Bill Snyder's lamenting right now. Uh, it's amazing. Three consecutive giveaways by Kansas State have turned a close football game into being on the verge of a blowout. And uh, it's very, very tough for Kansas State to work through this mentally right now. It's, it's agony for the Kansas State coaching staff. Third and one, Mark Dunn has Darren Sproles behind him, and Dunn will take it himself. Tell you a little bit more about Mark Dunn, the backup quarterback. He played last week, played the entire game, actually, against Texas Tech. He was 16 of 40 throwing the ball. He's a junior college transfer from Brigham City, Utah. Dave, this guy put up unbelievable numbers at Rick's Junior College, where he was an All-American. Oh, he certainly did, but against Texas Tech in Division I, he was humbled a little bit. You know, the speed of the game, and he found out what college football was all about, and he said, well, I've got, I've got a lot to work on. And he threw 42 touchdowns last year in J.C. Ball. Good strike there. And initially, it was a yeah. first down for Taco Wallace. He gave away some yards. We'll see if they give him forward progress. You, know, you can do that in high school and junior college, lose ground and gain ground, but if you do a steady of diet that, of that, in the NCAA Division One, uh, it's a little bit more of a challenge. It's it's tough to regularly lose ground to gain ground. Well, if you do that a lot, you stand next to the coach on the sideline. Exactly, and, and if you don't change it up, and at some point get your shoulder pads squared up the football field and burst, you know they're going to get a, a, a handle on what you're trying to do and stay off of you until you give ground and then throw your throw to the ground. Okay, a couple things that have happened with the turnovers. Obviously, L. Roberson's gotten beaten up to the point where he can't go. And the best play they've had all day has been the option. Is that eliminated down three touchdowns with 14 minutes to go? Yeah, that's not done strength. I mean, I, I think they're going to have done fire and fall back now. I think they're going to throw the football a lot more. And Dunn gets Warren. And Warren, tackled by Bartovich, gets eight or nine. Dunn was uh, in that Texas Tech game, Drew. He had a few more opportunities than he was able to take advantage of. You know, 14 times he had had people over, open and nine times over through him, five times under through him. And, and he realized, I mean, when he went over the tape with Ron Hudson, he said, I'm, I'm a lot better than that. And I'll, and I'll prove to you that I am. And he's getting an opportunity to prove it immediately. He's a big, strong kid. He's 6'4", close to 210 pounds. He's a little bit older. He's 23. He served a Mormon church mission for a couple of years. So Went, went to Chile. Went to Chile. So he's probably uh, fluent in Spanish, we assume, in, in case uh, we need some sort of translation. That's a first down. That was one of those credit card first downs. You put the credit card in there, and if it doesn't slide through, it's a first down. K-State continues to move it. And let's check in again with Jim Knox. Jim? Drew is sitting this series out. Brian Gamble, the fine linebacker of the Texas A&M Fighting Aggies. And what reason why he got his bell rung and that interception. They said they checked him out. Trainers checked him out. A-OK. -okay, he'll be in next series. But right now, over here, Ty Warren, they're working on his knee. That's not good news. Marcus Jasmine is in at the nose tackle as Rocky Bernard gets a piece of the tackle. Rocky on rock. <laughs> yeah, Rocky on rock, and also Jasmine to finish things off, 91. Ty Warren, boy, that knee injury, he had a bruised heel against Baylor. He injured his heel and, and uh, didn't perform up to expectations of himself or the coaching staff against Colorado, so Ty Warren is getting nicked up a little bit. And that happens. There's a, there's a lot of traffic, a lot of... Uh, a lot of uh, activity goes on at the line of scrimmage.
Second and 11 for Dunn. Rodriguez coming, backside throw. Warren has it. And he's tackled at the 28-yard line by Mont Simon, who's in the game for Brian Gamble, who Jim Knox told you is sitting this series out. It's going to be third down and about seven yards to go. They need the 23-yard line. And it's four-down territory. If they don't get it on third down, you better believe they're going on fourth. No more indecision you're down a bunch you know you're down three scores you're down 31 to 10 to get about kicking field goals at this juncture yeah, it's really more, uh, more like third and five i should say offset eye and changing the play Goby burst through a big hole on a first down. A flag came down. Looked like there was movement on the defensive line. Yeah, Penwright was in the neutral zone, Drew. He, he jumped out of his three-point stance premature to the snap. Dave, was that a situation where Dunn checked from a pass to a run? I, yeah, I think, I think you're absolutely right. Here's Penwright jumping a little early. And, you know, he's, he, he wants to sack every play. So he's wired, you know, to come off the line of scrimmage and a little uh, longer count, a little voice inflection hard count, you get a first down by penalty. I know you saw your man again, Rock Cartwright, good lead block on Jared Morris. Here's Dunn on the option, and there's Cartwright providing the block for Scobie, and he's out of bounds at the 11. He attacks you, doesn't he? He does. I mean, Rock, uh, there's no bashfulness about him. It's a contact sport. Rock benches 502 pounds, and he, he squats over 900, and, and that's a ride. He gave Keel a ride right there. And that and that's a physical safety in Terrence Keel. It is. But uh, he's, he hasn't run into anything like the Rock. Rock gets under your pads and, and finishes. And Rock also power cleans 385. That's a test of overall body strength, and that's enormous. Got the old lineman looking up to him in the weight room. Scobie hammers to the four. You know what I like about Rock in this drive in its entirety by Kansas State is they're down 21, but you now they're still playing physical football. You know, it's not like they're you know going to spit the bit on the rest of the football game here. And it's easy to be a front runner. It's easy to play hard when you're up 21, but give me the guys that play hard when you're down 21. And you can win with them eventually. Oh, this is a prime for football team. Dunn, oh no, he put that on the ground. Scobie does a smart thing. Yeah. He's scrambling to get the football, and, and if you've ever tried to recover a bouncing football, it's oblong, it's, it's very difficult. And, and he said, I gotta get it out of bounds. Rodriguez is the disruptor. Rodriguez hits Dunn and takes Dunn to the turf, and, and Dunn doesn't get rid of the football before the contact by Rodriguez, and Scobie just bats it out of bounds. He says, I'm not messing with this. I'm going to get this thing off the field to play because the last team that had possession of the football was, was my team, Kansas State, so I know if I get it out of bounds, it's still my ball. Ten-yard loss, however, so now it's second and goal at the 14. Dunn, screen, ball up in the air, nearly intercepted by Morris. They ran a middle screen with the tight end, Nick Warren. I'll tell you what, tremendous recognition by Texas A&M's entire defensive line. They knew exactly what was coming. Peroni limping off the football field, nicked up a little bit on that particular play, but none of the Texas A&M defensive linemen were fooled. Yeah, you can't really get a good shot of what I, a good idea, but everybody starts to react back, and, and nobody continued to pass rush. And everybody knew that it was a middle screen, and they just stayed right there, and there was no place for them to throw the football. Third and goal. Play clock at three. Dunn, slant, and the rot was jumped. Broken up by Davis, but a flag. Wallace was running the slant. Davis jumped the rot, but evidently he came through the man.
It's been quite a first game. Defense, the ball was right two yard line. Kind of, it's been kind of a an interesting day for Taco. His first game, Division One. Comes across the middle of the football field. Early contact. I'll tell you that, that that's pretty good. Uh, pretty good defensive coverage right there. That's route recognition. That's breaking up the football. I don't see anything wrong with what Sammy Davis did there. He just beat the receiver to the spot, and he has a right to that spot in the football field. I would not be a happy camper if I were the candy man, Sammy Davis. Scoby. Grabbed by Bonovic, shy of the goal line. Oh, it's a big break for Kansas State. If they can score a touchdown here quickly, they're back in it. And the crowd reacting, you're wondering why, because Big Joe Hall stepped into the game. Well, red zone has been a difficult spot. It has been the twilight zone, more so than the red zone for the Wildcats today. Have not had great success here. Don taking it himself. Did he get in? Yes. yes. Touchdown, Kansas State. With 10.42 left, they have an opportunity to close within 14. Dave, I think you, you really nailed it. Kansas State got after it on that drive. You didn't see him get the dauber down, and they still have an opportunity in this football game. There's enough time. Well, they haven't lost uh, two home games, consecutive home games, since 1989. That says, speaks a lot to the, to the character of this football team. And another problem with, in the kicking game, the protection problems, but Bright snuck it through there. That thing never got more than 10 and a half feet off the ground. 35-17. 10.42 to go in the fourth quarter. That's the line score. This one's 31-17. Aggies. All turnovers. 17 points in the third quarter. Hung up there by Texas A&M. All courtesy of Kansas State giveaways. Kyle Hotvater will kick it deep. Not Jared Bright here. Into the win. Terrence Murphy with the football across the 30 to the 32-yard line. It was a 14-10 game late in the third quarter. Well, this, this is missed opportunities. That was the early field goal missed by Bright, and then the fumbled punt by Lockett results in a field goal by Skates. Interception thrown by, by L. Roberson to, to uh, Gamble results in a touchdown by Weber, so they're taking advantage here. And then Rodriguez makes a big hit. The ball bounces off of Rock Cartwright's shoulder pads. Penwright takes it to the house for a touchdown. So every time Kansas State turned it over, AM got points, 17 points off the of three turnovers. Farmer gets three or four. The last 24 plays for the Aggies have resulted in 25 yards. Wow. That's amazing. That's a little over a yard of pop, and that's not going to get it done. But when you get short fields given to you that Kansas State has given to Texas A&M, you don't have to generate a whole lot of yards. Kansas State's defense has not played poorly, and Kansas State has run the ball for over 200 yards. But the turnovers killed them in the third quarter. Yeah, if you look at the numbers, you think the score might be reversed. Tank Reese in the backfield, a loss of two. He's played well. He has. He's been disruptive. He's been on the other side of the line of scrimmage with regularity today. Tank has got a low center of gravity. Tank gets his pads under your pads, and Tank has a good change of direction for a tank. I mean, he can he can move right to left, left to right very, very rapidly. You know what I like about him? At junior college, he, he played at Hutchinson Junior College, not far from here. He was a punter also. That's, that's incredible. And, and he rushed in high school for 1,700 yards his senior year. So, so Tank's versatile. Yeah, that's an athletic tank right there. Third and eight. Barish can't find anybody open. Still nothing going on, and Lieber will get credit for a sack. I was looking in the secondary. There was no one available. Nowhere to throw the football. And Barris really could have just thrown it away. Instead of taking the sack when you get out of uh, pocket like that, throw it away. 
goes down as an incompletion, but let's take a look. Motion. Where does he have an opportunity to throw the football? Got underneath coverage here, picked up here. Nowhere to go with the football. Now, Ferris is uh, is saying, well, I can either take the sack or throw it away. I'm just going to eat it. Skates the punt. Wow. With the wind. Lockett makes sure of this one, and he slips down at the 27-yard line. 44 yards on the punt, just three on the return. Here's the deal. 8.54 left, and Kansas State trails by two touchdowns. Comfort in game summary. You could sum it up very quickly. It's turnovers. Look at that. Look at that. Kansas State has outrushed them by close to 160 yards. Roberson's out of the game now with that turf toe re-aggravation. Murphy has had a heck of a game. This is the game right there. That's that's it in a nutshell. Three giveaways, 17 points for the Aggies. And changing the play again. He's changing the play again. Wanted to alert E.B. Dunn gets Lloyd. Davis tackles him. Pick up a six. And Jim Knox has another injury update. All right, let's get you updated. First off, Ty Warner back on the field. Playing with a bruised knee now, guys. Evan Peroni looks like he's through for the afternoon. A sprained right ankle. Yeah, Peroni didn't look good when he left. And very lonesome feeling right now for L. Roberson by himself on the bench. And that's a tough kid, Dave, because he hobbled off a number of times today. Yeah, turn toe is not pleasant. How about, how about the pirouette by Joe Hall to the 42-yard line? Joe Hall looked like Thumbelina. He, he looked like Rudolf Nureyev. Yeah, he was working his way through there. And Joe Hall is, uh, has had some problems with his left leg as well, and he's signaling he's got another problem with it. But... And Joe's a big human being now. And, uh, and Joe, to do such a tight pirouette and to get north and south off that pirouette, this is, this is like a, it's, that's Jerome Bettis, a bigger version. He's got the feet. He's been, uh, you know, he can try out for the June Taylor dancers. Now, now, if he's dancing Saturday night, he always leads, doesn't he, Dave? Absolutely. Done. Trying to find an available man. And he was looking in the direction of Lloyd, and Keel was underneath that pass play. And fortunately for Dunn, it fell incomplete. You know, from what I've seen of Big Joe Hall today, I think he's a franchisee candidate for an Arthur Murray dance studio. <laughs> he's got all the moves, man. He's strong. Joe Hall, seven carries, 47 yards on the day. Very productive for the big fella. You got to pick your spots with Joe because you know you don't get a lot of miles per gallon. That's true. That's true. He's uh, he's one of those SUVs. It was at the gas station. Second and ten. Done on the counter. We'll get six yards. Third and four. Let's update our players to watch and see how they've responded this day. Well, Penwright certainly has flashed. <laughs> he got that quarterback sack nine and a half on the season now, and huge play off of the fumble that ricocheted off of Rock Cartwright's shoulder pads, and Pierce has flashed as well. Six tackles, including one behind the line of scrimmage, so the players we wanted to watch had an idea. We had an eyeball on them, I think. They both played well. And this isn't good right now. You're looking at Gerard Penwright, but uh, right now, Ocean Honarshian is being helped off the field. And they don't have offensive linemen. In fact, Nick Warren was taking some snaps this week at tackle, and he's their starting tight end. Right. I wonder if they're going to put Doley in there or if Warren's going to go inside. Who do they have in this football game? You know, Retley is uh, is one of the guys rotating inside at, at the guard spot. And boy, if that's, if that's a, a major injury, they're, they're in real trouble. That's their fourth tackle. But that's a, a real, real big problem. They, that'd be their fourth tackle they would have lost on the season. They lost a good one in Thomas Barnett early. Yeah, they, he was the kingpin. Third and four. Dunn's going to run it. Cartwright gets a block, and Dunn lunges very close to a first down. You know, he, he has got some mobility. Dunn is uh, far from done in this football game. He's still working very hard. And, and Cartwright gets a, gets a little seal block, and, and Dunn plants the right foot, and boom. Looks like a slalom skier. Cuts it back up inside. 
close to first down yards. This may be one of those credit card measurements as well. It's going to be close. Yeah, it's going to be tight. That's a very accurate description, Dave, of the cut he made. It looked like uh, it looked like Alberta Tamba. <laughs> I would have had ligaments sprinkling the field again. There's no way I can do that. And, and you know what? You know this, Dave, better than anybody. That's, that's much. It, it's fun to cut on the turf if you're back, but it's painful also oh, at yeah. the end of the day. I mean, it jars you. you know, I remember every time I played on AstroTurf, of course, if you're a bigger person on turf, even if you don't get injured, your ankles, your knees, all your joints are sore the next day. There's no getting around it. Cartwright. And Rock. Rumbles for seven. He knocks West Bodovich backwards. Rock rolls in there and people fall like bowling pins, whether he's blocking or running. He's always got his pad level under yours and, and, and knocking you around. He's uh, rushing for over four yards of pop today. Both fullbacks have been a factor in the running game. Both of them definitely have. They've both got the talent to, to be a factor. Inside 640 to go. Kansas State complete to Lloyd. First down to the 36-yard line. And the beauty of college football, when you trail, the clock stops initially after every first down. 6.30 to go. Kansas State down by 14 points. Three catches today for Ricky Lloyd. Did he get a foot down? No. Lockett's well, lobbying excuse me, for it. Uh, excuse me, it's Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd 82, is, not 22. He's lobbying for it, but did not get the call. Pretty good throw, Dave. It was. I mean, done through a strike. Did he have the left foot down? Nope. You got to have possession and at least one foot down. As he tries to tap, tap the, the sideline, the ball has not arrived yet. Now the ball arrives, and his left foot is up, right foot's down, good call. Never had possession of the ball when the left foot was pegged, tap, tap on the sideline. Done, out of the gun. Warren with the catch to the 18-yard line. Beautiful throw by Mark Dunn. Three receptions for Nick Warren. Good protection afforded done by the offensive line. You know, a guy that's doing a, a darn good job in, in giving a vision to Dunn at the right tackle position who's had to jump around and, and play more than one spot is Retley. Retley's out at right tackle now. So you've had E.B. playing center guard and tackle. Retley's played guard and tackle. I mean, the musical chairs up front, and they played pretty well. go and now he's gonna have to run oh he's gonna get it to warren good improvisation there out of bounds at the 14 yard line well he had rocky bernard and, and rodriguez all over him did done but mentally he did not come undone and he threw a, he threw a football to, to warren that he could handle it's pretty here, here comes rocky bernard and there's rodriguez and, and done just kind of like shot puts the thing, kind of a hook shot put, and Warren gets that right foot just in bounds. Nice, nice job on both ends of that play. And still on the turf, or at least on one knee, is Rocky Bernard. Rocky says, if I'm going to chase a guy all that way, and I don't get anything out of it, that's disappointing. I don't know if he's just refueling out of gas and just needs a little bit of time to get refueled or if he's uh, got a little bit of a nick that he needs attending to. Uh, he has played so well for Texas A&M this year. You know, R.C. Slocum, after the first two weeks of the season, his team was 2-0, but he wasn't happy with his defense. And he said, you know, this wrecking crew moniker just doesn't automatically get attached to you because you're a starter on defense. You have to earn it. Right. It's a, it was an old-fashioned calling out. And he called his defense out and said, you're not playing to the caliber of the wrecking crew. Until you increase your performance, wrecking crew is a misnomer for you. And they started playing, and their numbers got dramatically better starting with the Oklahoma State game that we did down there where they played very, very effective defense. 
Second and six. 5.39 left. Here's the option with Dunn at Penwright. Closes that down in a hurry. Well, he's sudden. Penwright uh, closes on a football pretty well. Whether it's a quarterback, a running back, or a loose ball in the turf, he has the old nose for the football. He's got quickness, and when he arrives, he's got uh, a temper that is not in a good state. Third and four, Cartwright, the lone setback. And he almost missed Rock. And Rock is corralled at the 11-yard line. Kronovich is on the face mask. You're right, Dave. Yeah. It would have been a fourth and two. You know, and Rock, he gets underneath you, and the problem is, you know, you try to grab the first, you can grab on Rock because Rock's one of those bodies where you got a big pectoral, you know, on the front, and, and quads on the bottom, and that's it. First of all, face mask, defense, half the distance, automatic, first down. He doesn't give you much hitting surface, so you're just trying to grab whatever you can, and Bodovich, as he reaches around, grabs up in the headgear, and as a result, grabs the face mask and turns Rock around, tries to play a little exorcist with him, and penalty. <laughs> Can't yeah. do that. No, and I, I've only seen one person ever able to get the head all the way around. That was Linda Blair. Yeah, that's... But that green stuff was... What was she eating? Do you think pea soup? Yeah, right I there? think it was pea soup. Bad stuff. Yeah. Never had pea soup since. Posted right. goal from the five-yard line. Clock very much a factor now. If you're Kansas State, you want to be expeditious at getting it in the end zone. Yeah, you got to think ahead. You know, obviously, you got to think about, you know, scoring and, and uh, executing your best onside kick and getting the ball back. Cartwright driving, touchdown. Rock Cartwright hit it to two, would not be denied. And that's a way to get the ball in the end zone quickly, let Rock finish. Rock started it, and Rock's now finished. It looks like another offensive lineman down on the play, working his way to his feet. That's Redley. Can't lose Rentley. Man, they're down to no numbers out there on the football field at all. Now Bill Snyder's going to make a decision, Drew. He kicks the football here down seven. Do you onside kick with 454, or do you kick it deep? Your defense has been playing well against AM. You get it back, but will you get it back with enough time and enough opportunity to tie? With three timeouts, I, I really think it's automatic. You kick, kick it, it off yeah. the way your defense is played. Joe Ream is going to attempt this extra point. So it's uh, kickers galore for Kansas State. That has been their story all season long. Well, they've had four different kickers miss. Let's see if he makes it. He does. 50,000 erupt for an extra point like you've never heard before. 31-24. It's getting interesting. We'll be back after a word from Dr. Pepper and your local Dr. Pepper bottler. Final 454 within a touchdown. Oh, man. And the Aggies drop it for a moment, and then they fall on it at the 25-yard line. Well, Texas A&M has run 19 plays in the second half, too, and they only have 36 yards to show for it. And Rock finalized uh, a 13-play drive for the four-yard touchdown run. Four minutes off the clock, 73 yards. It's up to the defense right now, Drew. They're going to get the football back three and out or takeaway. Texas A&M does not have a giveaway all, all game long. And except for about two and a half minutes in the third quarter where Kansas State self-destructed with three giveaways, they've taken it to A&M. They really have dominated the second half. And blown up in the backfield. Joseph tackled by Bryant. That's the second big play Bryant has made. He was unblocked quarterback sack of Ferris that set up the touchdown right before half. He's hurt. He made the tackle, but he's slow to get up. And he had the huge quarterback sack on Ferris in the first half. And once again, he shoots the gap. Tight end trying, can't clip him from behind, and Bryant makes the play. Tight end down inside trying to clip him, and which is legal. You can do that at that area of the football field, but the true freshman, Carragher, could not get him cut off. But Bryant gets uplifted because Carragher did tweak his ankle a little bit. Thomas Houchin has come in to replace him. Second down at 14. The clock moves. Delayed a 
Farmer, they're chasing him, and they'll get him near the line of scrimmage. It's Terry Pierce. Kansas State is fired up. They're feeding off the energy of the crowd. The crowd's feeding off the performance of the football team. Dave, you remember down in Norman, Oklahoma, Kansas State down 35-14 in the third quarter. They came storming back, and they ended up losing, but 38-37, so right. this is not unfamiliar territory. Exactly. They've got a pre precedent, a reference point. Third and long right here. Ferris has to be careful. Can't turn it over and give a short field for the Wildcats. Has to be sound in his decision-making. He heat him up for dropping coverage. They go with coverage, shuttle pass, Lieber makes the tackle after a minimal gain. It will be a three and out. Three and out, and did Kansas State call their first timeout? It looked like Buell was signaling for a timeout, and I believe they gave it to him. Now, the one good thing here for the Aggies, they will punt the football with the wind. And Skates has been pretty good in that department this year, 41 yards per. Well, I'm gonna receive the punt at the 25. Wow, Aaron Lockett with a block. One to beat. <laughs> Tackled at the 23. It's the first one he's busted all year. 53-yard return by Lockett. Last year, he led the NCAA in punt returns. Averaging almost 23 yards per punt return. He took three of those back for touchdowns. He almost took his... A punt return back for a touchdown the first time today. Skates kind of outkicked his coverage a little bit here. Not as much hang time as he needed. Lockett made the first miss, and once that happened, Gamble misses. Then he's off to the race as he gets to the sideline, cuts back to the inside. Can't quite outrun everybody. Tremendous play by Lockett, making up for that fumble on the punt return earlier. Real short field now. Scobie to the 20. And ahead to the 19. Think about this. Last year, Dave, you talked about it. Averaged almost 23 yards of return. He's an All-American. This year, they haven't been able to bust one. He's averaging less than seven yards of punt return coming in. Right. And, and I think, you know, in hindsight, you say A&M, why kick to him? Great players make big plays at key times. But all day long, he has not been a factor. All year long, he has not been a factor. But he stepped up at a crucial time to make himself a factor. In fact, he had a negative play in punt return today when he right. fumbled. Absolutely. AM comes with a blitz. Dunn runs the option. Scobie in trouble. Breaks a tackle. And he'll get out of bounds. About a yard gain. Now they're going to keep the clock moving. That's not going to be popular here. As he broke the tackle of Christian Rodriguez. And Retley is really hurting again. Big Retley limping to the sideline. Taking a knee. Retley's trying to finish, but he can't. Another timeout for Kansas State. Retley is... I mean, they're down to nothing. I think Warren might have to go inside at this point. They don't have anybody else to shuffle inside. The musical chairs, the music stopped, and the chairs are all filled up. There's nobody left. It's going to be third and four. 159 left. And the timeout was called by Kansas State. They'll have one left. Here's what's uh, on the schedule. Three of the next five right here at Wagner Field. Kansas, you know Kansas, when they come a call and these two schools meet, that'll be a battle. Yep. At Ames, that's a tough one. Obviously, in Lincoln is a tough one. Louisiana Tech is a makeup for it. The game missed uh, earlier this season after the events of September 11th. And then a game we'll call, Dave, on national television right here on November 24th when they get together with Missouri. And for the Aggies, they have Iowa State Tech, Oklahoma, Ooh, Texas. That's so a tough finish. It's a very tough finish, but if they can hold on here, they still control their destiny no in the doubt. Big 12 South. No doubt. And I want to tip my cap to Dunn. 
Dunn has done a remarkable job. Dunn did not perform up to the expectations of himself and the coaching staff against Texas, Texas Tech. But Mark Dunn, you played well today, my friend. Third and four, they'll run it with Sproles. Here's the true freshman. And he's run out of bounds, shy of a first down. It's going to be fourth and one. Boy, what do you do here? Now, if you have L. Roberson available, you may run the option and put it in his hands and let him make the decision. But now do you give it to Rock or Joe Hall? Yeah, or do you give it to Joe Hall? Do you have a, a power eye formation with Rock and Joe Hall and give it to Scobie? You know, I think you got to do something to muscle up, and obviously that that offensive line that's being held together by bailing wire and tape right now is going to have to come off the football hard. They got the heavy backfield, Hall and Cartwright with Scobie behind them, fourth and one, trying to get him to jump, trying to get Texas A&M to jump. Dunn takes it himself. You got it. Looks like he got it. Quarterback sneak with that power backfield behind him. Didn't want to take a chance on handing the ball backwards and gaining yards. He just cozied up behind E.B. for the sneak. Now, did they get a good spot? Looked like, to me, it looked like he lurched Ooh, forward you know very easily. You know what? Boy, they didn't spot it very well, yeah, did they? Yeah, initially, you thought he had it. Yeah. And where they spotted the football, it's real close. Now, it doesn't matter where his body goes. It's where he was carrying the football. When his knee touched down, where was the ball? But he's got it. Still alive. Narcy Slocum tightens that belt another notch, and Bill Snyder says, I'm proud of you guys. Now, let's finish this comeback. We came up a little short against Oklahoma. Let's see if we can finish this one. This was 31-10, folks, heading to the fourth quarter. Scobie, and he's tackled by Penwright. You think it's physical out there? That's about the third guy that's lost the hat today. Christian Rodriguez looking yeah. around for it. Yep, lids have been flying. But you know what? A misdirection. Penwright and Rodriguez are both slamming to the inside. They're crashing. A little bit of a reverse, maybe block it on a reverse or something of that nature to keep those line outside linebackers at home. That play took 40 seconds. Dunn in trouble, has to unload. The catch by Cartwright! Wow. Out of bounds at the five! Okay, we talked about the crown. Dunn's got pressure in his face from two people, and he's still able to deliver the ball down the crown to a five-foot, seven-and-a-half-inch target. I can't tell you how great a play this is by Dunn. Pressure in his face, he's retreating, throws off his back foot, and Rock, left hand tips to himself, catches the ball. That's an amazing throw and a great effort on the other end by The Rock. And he stops the clock with 106 left. Now it's third and three. How about this football game? Unreal. Cartwright and Scobie. They give it to The Rock. He gets redirected. And it's going to be another fourth down. They'll have to call a timeout, you'd assume, to talk about it. And now the timeout comes with 53 seconds left. Fourth down. Comes down to this. you got to come up with your best short yardage goal line play that you have game planned all week long. Bill Snyder, the computer like mine to his, the cards are sorting through right now. And RC saying, hey, Wrecking Crew, step up and earn your name. You know, make a defensive play here. Wrecking Crew steps up and makes plays when the game's on the line. It's time for you guys to do that. It all comes down to this. Amazing effort by both these football teams. And this is the play once again. In the face of pressure, Dunn steps back and delivers a ball that Cartwright tips to himself and makes a heck of a catch. I mean, the pressure was extreme by Black. And also, putting pressure in the face of Dunn was uh, Webb, the linebacker, and, and, and Dunn just handled it so well. You know, it didn't go, but I like the call, trying to get the quick trap with right. the fullback, one of your best players, Rob Cartwright. Now play offensive coordinator. Bill Snyder, along with Ron Hudson, conferring. 
What do you run here on fourth and a full three yards? Well, the option has been so good to you, and Texas A&M has had so many problems defending it. Your temptation might be to go to the option again, maybe even the short side of the field, but you have Dunn at quarterback rather than L. Roberson. I think if L were available, I think that's what you do. I think you put the ball in his hands and execute the option. With Dunn, I think maybe you get him out of pocket and give him a two-way go, either run it or throw the football. I'm not sure that uh, that you can you can consider the option as heavily as you considered it with L as your quarterback executing it. 53 seconds left, fourth and three. Five for the touchdown. We go to the option. Scobie gets a block, and he's not going to get there. Wow. He is stopped short. Terrence Keel made the tackle, and the wrecking crew defense holds. Boy, that's just a heart, a dagger in the heart of Kansas State. Two great comebacks to come up short on the road in Oklahoma and come up short at home against AM after allowing big deficits to occur is really heart-wrenching with this football team. You have to give AM a lot of credit. They made plays when they had to, particularly this one. They do go to the option, which isn't shocking to me because AM has had problems assignment-wise defending it, but everybody played their responsibilities well here. Good inside-out pursuit. And now Keel made a heck of a play. Came off the block and got nice contact on Scobie and, and finished him in the open field. I mean, that's the safety matched up against a, a running back. And the safety with good contact keeps Scobie short of the first down. 46 seconds left. Barris will just run a quarterback sneak and run out the clock what a football game let's check in again with jim knox what a, what a football game indeed and on that last play bill steider went all the way down the sidelines walked to the two yard line just to double check if they got the right spot he didn't like what he see saw needless to say guys yeah, there was no question yeah that he was he, he was stopped